13 touchdowns, four interceptions. This guy is still alive for the Heisman Trophy, believe me. He has a great supporting cast. Najee Davenport, unselfish, goes from tailback to fullback, big powerful running back. This is the guy you've got to see. Frank Gore, true freshman. Unbelievable speed in their defense. You talk about speed. McDougal in that defense certainly gets it done. Excellent football team in Miami. Great speed. Temple House thought they were going to have a 5-6 win season. They do have some things that they can hang their hat on. Number two in the conference against the rush. Number two against the run, and they'll have their hands full this week, and they're going to have to have a big game from Dan Klecko. Nine tackles for losses, two and a half sacks. Excellent football player. One of the guys we'll be watching, though, is a game-breaker. Frank Gore, the freshman, averaging more than 10 yards per carry. Temple better find him. Coming up next, we're going to check out Mike Gleason in our Sports Center studios as we get ready for the biggest game of the week, Miami and Temple. Look at Today's game is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Cooper Tires, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Discover card for the slightly smarter consumer. Miller Lite, it's Miller time. And by Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. Wind is going to be a factor today, folks, with Hurricane Michelle heading out of the east at 24 miles per hour here in Miami. Here's our weather situation, 82 degrees, partly sunny, humidity 74%. Actually, rather comfortable here for Miami. 24 to 30 miles an hour out of the east, going right to left across your radio, your uh, TV screen. And Bobby Wallace, 47 years old, signed a three-year contract extension back in November in his fourth year at Temple. And Larry Coker, third coach of Miami history to start 6-0, moves up from offensive coordinator. And Miami Hurricanes, they won the toss, and they elected to defer. So Todd Sievers has it teed up. He is a semifinalist for the Luke Rosa Collegiate Place Kicker Award. He's having an outstanding season. And we are underway from the Orange Bowl Big East football. And with the wind, as you might expect, Sharp catches the ball out of bounds. And Jeff, wouldn't you like to be teeing it up with this win, an extra 100 yards, right? Unfortunately, you got to play some of those into the win. Win. That's exactly right. That's what Temple's facing as we start off here at Miami. Here's a look at their quarterback. The freshman Mike McGann out of St. Joe's Prep in Philly. He's out of Havertown, Pennsylvania, western suburbs of Philadelphia. Big guy, 6'6", 200 pounds, 47% on the season, three touches, seven interceptions. And one of the stories for the Temple Owls this year, they've had to go long field so much. Tonardo Sharks maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Good job, James Lewis came up. Jonathan Vilma, the middle linebacker on the stop. Offensive line's been a problem, although Dave Yovanovitz, he's been a horse for the Owls this year. And Jeff, what a line they've got to go against. Matt Walters leads the defensive line in tackles. This is a very quick, very aggressive Miami defensive front seven. Second down and nine. They do give him a yard credit. The wind really whipped them through here out of the eye. Miami showing blitz. They bring blitz on the draw. Nowhere to go. Swarm Thunder is going to leave a third down and long. Jonathan Vilma with James Lewis again. And Vilma takes over from uh, the departed Dan Martin. Tornado Sharps, you've seen him in action. Jason McKee, pretty solid blocking back. Dillard, their number one receiver. Vilma, you've seen a lot of him these first two plays. DJ Williams, a converted fullback, outstanding on the corner. And Edward Reed, one of the captains, got six picks already, one away from the career record. Third down and 12 after that loss of four out of the gun for the Owls. Keep it very conservative. And they ran Chris Pitt. Jamal Green, number 55, made the tackle for the Canes. Jamal's a junior from Camden, New Jersey, so he's getting to play against a team from back in his home area. And with this type of wind, you certainly understand why Miami deferred and, and chose to kick the ball off and have the wind at their back the first quarter. J.C. Amore is on the punt against the win, and he did a heck of a job to get it to go that far. The bounce, Buchanan, cost his team about 15 yards by not catching the ball. And Miami's going to put the ball in play after the 45-yard punt from the 35-yard line. Yeah. 
We're battling the wind in the booth. There's Ken Dorsey. You can hear our papers rattling around. Hurricanes, good looking ball club. They can strike quickly. And Ken Dorsey looks like he's been a 20 year vet. Good starting position here for the Canes. There's Drew Tennant, Jerome 35. On the throw, he's got the wind over the middle and drop. And an opportunity for a catcher, Ethnic Sands, a converted quarterback. Check that, uh, now Jay Davenport, the intended receiver. Bryant McKinney, Joaquin Gonzalez. Jeff, have you ever seen a better pair of tackles in college football? They're the best two offensive tackles combo in the nation right now. Dan Klecko, Joe's young man. You know what, he's a good football player, makes a lot of things happen inside. Second down play for the Hurricanes. There's a nice tackle at the 40-yard line. Clinton Portis brought down by Sean Lacey, the three-way player for the Temple Owls. He wears number one. Clinton Portis, outstanding run. Just picked up six on that play. Davenport, good blocker, not running the ball a lot this year. Taylor Suman, Jeff, seems like he's been around forever. Led the conference in tackles the last two years. And Akeem Staples getting a start inside at linebacker as opposed to defensive end due to injury. Jamal Wallace. Free safety, a good one for Temple. On the 41, a little swing pass. And hit right off the pads of Portis. So if you're the Temple Owls, you are thrilled right now. A three and out by Miami. Dan Klecko applying the pressure to Dorsey. Uh, we talked about the quick first step. Certainly something his dad possessed was a tremendous first step. Same thing happening with Dan. Freddie Kepshaw hunting with the win. Oh, hangs a high one. Oh, did he get that one? Woo! Nailed it. Five yards deep into the end zone. 59 yards. His long of the season, the previous best was 58. Well, both teams with a series of three and outs. No score here from Miami. You're watching Big East Football from ESPN+. Plus. Barkley for three! Ah! 27-year-old Steffi Graf, Wimbledon champion. The Super Bowl most valuable player is Troy Aikman. One second on the clock. Dallas touchdown. The yellow one is Pikachu. He's a Pokemon. Then who is Digimon? Thanks. Digimon is like a different group, wholly separate from the Pokemons. Thanks for clarifying that. Sure. Actually, Digimon means digital monsters. Pick me out a winner, Bobby. Okay. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Get into the zone. The ESPN zone. The ultimate sports dining and entertainment experience. Eat great food, watch any game that you want, and compete in our sports arena. ESPN zone. What more do you need? Visit the zone in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. In downtown Chicago in New York's Times Square, in Atlanta's Buckhead District, and in downtown Washington, D.C. Get into the zone. Welcome back, everybody. Dave Sims and Jeff Bosnick with you. Temple Owls putting it in play at their own 22nd series. First time they had the ball. Came more than negative two yards. Going into a very strong win. Sharks to the edge, 25-30. First down and more down the sideline, and finally run out of bounds at the 36-yard line, a gain of 16. Nice run by Ternardo Sharps, got to the edge on that right side. Good job by Anthony Bolden and Hendricks on the right-hand side. The real key block, watch your tight end on the right side of your screen. Ceiling down, here comes the guard around. 
to Northern Shops does not need a big hole to get through. Quick, explosive. And you mentioned this in the open day. This was a team that was looking for five or six wins and hopefully, you know, getting to a bowl game and really elevating this program back. Good block by Dan Carpenter. One of the things they've had problems with going long field. They pick up the blitz. Sharps cuts inside. Nice gain again. 42 yard line. Picks up six. Vilma with the tackle. So a quick hitter. They saw that blitz coming in. Here's what Temple did. 30 rushes, negative 36 yards, and that 36 yards was a bad snap that really killed their numbers. And I don't know if I've ever seen a number quite like this. 30 carries, and you lose 36 yards. And a snap botched, and it was applied towards the rushing total. They'll keep it on the ground. Sharps, oh yeah, big play. Number 17 got in there, D.J. Williams. He's a guy that was very impressive. He was the USA Today Defensive Player of the Year 1999. Came here as a fullback. In fact, played, had a real good game against Florida State here in the Orange Bowl last year. And right there at the hole, and that's the one thing you see. Taking that inside pad, not letting him outside. Good tackle, 22 of them, one for a loss. We talk about speed defensively. Virginia Tech certainly fast. This Miami team equally as fast. Temple just converting 26% on third down. Lynch coming. Little play action. McGann, first down and more. Carpenter into Miami territory out of bounds at the 45-yard line by Edward Big Reed. Pass. So the Owls it's moving the ball, a 10-yard pickup. First pass of the afternoon from McGann. Certainly they put the emphasis on running the football, play action, good ball fake by the young freshman. This is not an easy throw into this win, 25, 30 mile an hour win. How often do you see a freshman throwing to a freshman? You guys have at this level of football? Here's the other thing too, we, we in talking to uh, the Miami coaches, here's what McGann did during the uh, regular season. Randy Shannon, the uh, defensive coordinator expects Temple to take a few deep shots here. Short shot that time. Vilma covering Eric Carpenter. Carpenter's a freshman out of Lebanon, Pennsylvania. If you're Bobby Wallace, the head coach from Temple, what do you have to lose this afternoon? You know, open up your entire game plan. Certainly the weather will dictate part of that. And visiting with Bobby this weekend, he said one thing. He said, this is not the type of season we expected. He says, but our kids have not quit. They are continuing to play hard. And that's all you can ask for. He had a one and a half hour meeting with his team. And we'll get into this longer as the game goes on. Absolutely. Second down and 10 for the Miami 45. Oh, and a run straight up the middle. Lester Trammer, his first carry. He's a senior from Greenbelt, Maryland. William Joseph met him in the hole. Williams a junior from Miami. Bobby Wallace said one thing, Dustin. If you look at the records, this is Bobby's fourth year. You know, started to turn the corner in 2000 with a four and seven record. You know, they had great expectations. He was talking about maybe three out of conference wins and trying to win three in the Big East or, you know, come to a six and five record. Had an hour and a half long meeting with his team talking about the mindset of winning and losing. Uh oh, and this is the type of thing that's happened to the Owls all year. Just when you think they've got it going on, they get a bad snap like that or something falls against them, goes against them, and that ball all the way back to the 40-yard line. We talked about the win, Dave. This one's not even close. Donnie Klein, the center, number 56. You know, you have to have a lot of, uh, you know, credit for this Temple team. Donnie Klein's been playing all year long with a torn ligament and tore part of a uh, cartilage torn in his shoulder. Doesn't practice during the week, plays the game. More into the win. This time Buchanan makes the catch at the 32. Got room. Fumble, look at this. Who's going to get it? What a scramble here. That's going to take a while to sort this out. Oh, my goodness. Miami recovered at the 19-yard line, a 29-yard punt. What a wacky play. That ball must have advanced 20, 30 yards on the fumble. We talk about records. I don't think I've ever seen a fumble travel that far. Oh, I don't. I, I definitely think that's all the years I've been watching football. I've never seen one like that. Absolutely remarkable. We'll take a timeout here in Miami. The Canes at the 22-yard line when we come back after this wacky play here at the Orange Bowl. You're watching Biggie's football from ESPN Plus.
They are Saturday soldiers, prepared for battle, fighting for every pass, every yard, every touchdown. Catch all this week's college football action with ESPN Game Plan. It's maximum college football with up to 12 games you can't see anywhere else, only on pay-per-view. To be there, all you need to do is get ESPN Game Plan, now available as pay-per-day. To order, call your local cable operator or 1-800-DIRECT-TV or 1-800-333-DISH. at 10.30 on ESPN. All right, Mike, hour 32 of ESPN Radio's Hands on the Heisman contest continues, and so far we don't see any quit in any of these contestants. <laughs> Except for me. They quit soon. 32 hours. This is amazing how long they can stand there, let alone stand with their legs, and then hang on to something as well. It's very impressive so far. I couldn't do this. It's not so much the endurance. It's the ability to withstand the boredom. <laughs> For a check of the ESPN radio station near you, go to ESPNRadio.com. Good looking day here in Miami, although very windy. How about this return by Buchanan? Could be very well the longest fumble in NCAA history. Tremendous job by number 25, Al Marshall, to recover that football. Number one, football's oblong. 47-yard punt return. Hard to fumble, get a fumble recovery when the wind is blowing the way it is this afternoon. Anthony New, uh, Nebhard was the one that caused that fumble. He's out of Manhattan, uptown in Harlem. The Kings in great shape here. First and 10 at the Temple 22. 47 yards on that return. Had a good 30 yard look like on that return on the uh, fumble. Dorsey, Clinton Portis. Into the second wave, John Lacey hit him, but Portis fights his way to about the 14-yard line. A nice run by Clinton Portis. The second effort picks up seven. We talked about the two offensive tackles from Miami, and certainly they're a big part of the success of this offense. Dave, this offensive line has given up one sack in their last 12 games. That's have not given up a sack at all through 2001. Amazing. Last guy to sack Dorsey was a Keith Staples, number five for Temple. Game we did in Philly last year. Second down and three, balls at the 15. Dorsey's looking that way all the way. And Miami is on the board. Touchdown, Kevin Beard. 15 yards, his second TD for Kevin Beard. And for Dorsey, his 14th of the season, but more importantly, his 49th career touchdown pass, establishing a Miami record, 23rd straight game with a TD pass. And he moves ahead of Steve Walsh and Vinny Testaverde in the all-time list here at Miami. Talking to uh, Harry Donahue and Steve Joachim, the Temple broadcasters. They said how Temple's cornerbacks tend to give a lot of cushion, and that they did. Miami saw it, took advantage of it. Point after by Seavers, who's 33 of 34 now on the season. Two plays, 22, uh, 22 yards in just 50 seconds. It's 7-0 Miami. Look at some of the names that Ken Dorsey has just passed. Vinny Testaverde, Steve Walsh. Gino Toretta, Craig Erickson. You know, one name that's not even there. How about Jim Kelly? You bet. You know, everybody has always said that Penn State is linebacker U. This has got to be college U. Quarterback University right here. And you look at that drive, Dave. It's really been a microcosm of Temple's season. Oh, absolutely. Last week they get beat by Pittsburgh, 33-7. Pittsburgh had one drive over 50 yards of length. Only one. And Temple, conversely, had nothing but long field. Here's another look, Jeff. Good job by Miami formationing. And you know what? You get your wide receiver beard out on an island with a cornerback. Look at all the people in the box. Long throw for Dorsey. Make one person miss a tackle, easy touchdown. And how about the fact 
that Dorsey, that arm strength to get that ball so far across the field, they had to throw it two thirds away across the field. Seven nothing Miami. And for those that aren't here, they can't appreciate how strong this wind is blowing. How about very? How about this little storm out in the uh, Gulf? Yes, indeed. Hurricane Michelle winds up to 110 miles an hour. All hands on deck and all the weather channels and news stations down here. Seavers. Got a chance to return this? Maybe not. Six yards deep. Sharps to keep it right there. Third time Temple will start from its own 20. Here's a question of the penalty flag down. I think we're going to have a personal foul against Miami. A little extracurricular, but giving him the business after That's the right. play. The immortal words of Ben Dreith. Giving him the business. One of the great calls in the history of the NFL, and this one's against Temple. It's against Temple. Ben Dreif uh, played a couple of games that he uh, officiated. Personable guy, right? He was one of those officials that had rabbit ears. You That's know, if you talk. Game. Dead ball, personal foul, receiving team. We award a touchback. Penalized 10 yards, first and 10. John Smith, our referee today, to take it back half the distance to the goal. 10 yard line is where they're going to start. Not what Bobby Wallace wanted to see. And we talk about storms. If Temple can weather the Miami storm through the first quarter and get the wind at their back, first 15 minutes of this game, crucial for Temple. First down play. Third time Temple's had the ball. Again, long field again. Sharks. Look at that surge from the D line by Miami. A lot of movement in there. Vince Wolfrick in there and William Joseph. Will Fork is number 75, freshman from Lantana, Florida, 6'2", 346. William Joseph, 6'5", 282 from Miami. He's a junior. Here's the thing people don't talk about with Miami. How many teams have the ability to lose three number one draft picks to the NFL and yet still be number one in the country? Yep. Remarkable. Serious talent here. It's scary just watching these guys warm up. Second down and 10 at the 10. All up the middle for a tremor. Brought down by James Lewis. Lewis has had about five tackles already. Five yard pickup by Tremor at a Green Belt, Maryland. If you're Charlie Fisher, the offensive coordinator for Temple, huge third down play coming up. This play's very crisp though. Little inside trap. Number 20, Trammer. You know, you've got to like that positive running. They've clicked off a couple of runs in there, and it leads to the question. There you see Charlie Fisher, the offensive coordinator. How did Pittsburgh hold them to negative 36 yards a week ago? And again, it was that one snap that went, seemed like it rolled forever. A couple of nice cuts, but nowhere to run. Chris Campbell made the tackle on Trammer. Campbell's a senior out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. So that's got to be discouraging for Temple and very uplifting for that Miami defense. A three and out, see you later. So that left a fourth and three. Moore is going to punt again. Bobby Wallace got to hope he can hold it at seven nothing, and then he'll get a chance to have the wind in that second quarter. Maybe he can do some things throwing the ball. Second punt. Oh, he shanked this one. You golfers out there, you could relate to that one. Goodness gracious. That progress is only going to go to the 20 to the 32 yard line. Today's game is brought to you by Prudential Financial, growing and protecting your health. 15 yards on the punt. Two words, not good. You have to associate the the, the S word with a punt, don't you? Shank. Yes, indeed. How about this stat, folks? The average touchdown drive for the Canes, two minutes. And look at this. Talk about a short field from the 32. Little play action. Dorsey flushed. Steps and throws and gets it over to Davenport. Davenport taken down by Lefton Thompson. Strong safety out of Norristown for Temple. And Temple almost registers a first sack against this Miami Hurricane offense this year. Dorsey, a big kid, six foot five, 200 pounds, a little bit, you know, a little wiry. Look at that stat, folks. It's amazing. Last regular season sack against these Temple Owls last year in Philadelphia. And that's the key for a quarterback. If you can keep him clean, 
give him confidence in the pocket to step up and deliver the football. Good things happen. Lost was about two on that play, so here's Portis gliding, and he gets back to maybe the line, original line of scrimmage. Pretty good penetration by who else? Number 73, Dan Klecko. Nice play by Klecko, really clogged it up in the middle. 7 nothing, Miami. Took advantage. 15-yard fumble snap and then a 47-yard return. Dave Sims, Jeff Bostick, and our biggest crew here in Miami at the Orange Bowl. Dorsey with Kevin Beard, a 15-yarder for a touchdown. Beat 101 coverage, third down and 11. Dorsey got time, steps, throw, badly over, throws penalty flat. They had ethnic Sands running the seam wide open and they overthrew him. And then what's this now? Back up field, Dorsey joined with Raheem Brock. Dorsey got thrown down. I wouldn't be surprised to see Brock get thrown out of the game. Goodness gracious, we're all looking downfield. Then right in front of the uh, referee, John Smith, Raheem Brock drills Ken Dorsey. So it's probably going to be a pass interference as well as a personal foul here. And you wonder what provoked the personal foul uh, throwing the quarterback on the ground. Bobby Wallace on the far side. Out we have multiple fouls on the play against the defense. We have holding. You want a forward pass play defense that penalty will be declined we have rough net passer against the defense 15 yards previous spot automatic first down five minutes to go here in the first quarter <laughs> there's raheem brack out of dobbins high school and there's brack uh, Dorsey, I beg your pardon. Dorsey was the one that got up in Brock's face. But of course, Brock was the one that was flagged for it. So first and 10. Inside the 20 at the 19 yard line. Draw play, Portis running. Good fake, unbelievable fake. How about Dorsey all day? Throw fucking up. And let's go down to uh, Mike Gleason in our Sports Center studios. Well, Simsy, last year Antonio Bryan had a big day against Virginia Tech. And here he starts out the afternoon on the right foot. Priestley, Bryant, touchdown. And Pittsburgh on top of Va Tech right now, 7 0 in the first. David. David Priestley, that's a heck of a throw and catch with Bryant. Thank you, Mike. Second down and 10 from the 19. Dorsey had plenty of time on that last possession. Portis carried out the fake as well as you've seen anybody carry one out. This time looking for running room. Stop, starts, and paid for. Got back to the original line of scrimmage. You know, one thing that surprised me two plays ago when Dorsey got thrown to the ground, you will normally see the offensive lineman come in and really take whoever it was out. You really didn't see that. Surprising that, to me. That's a very good point. You know, there's a lot of things as an offensive lineman. You're not letting anybody mess with your quarterback. Ball's at the 18-yard line. Third down and 10. Portis, four carries, 14 yards. Lone setback and Klecko moves. It'll be a penalty against Temple. Bring up a third and short. He looks just like his father, doesn't he? Yeah, just that he's, uh, let's see, they list him at 6'1". He's probably more like 5'11", 6 foot. <laughs> Joe's about 6'2". Saw Joe during... Uh, Early part of this season. Joe's still working out. Playing a lot of golf, too. Those two don't go together. <laughs> Good ball, offsides, defense, contact foul, five yard penalty, remains third down. And Joe? that's one of the things that the uh, Coleco family, either Joe or Dan, always had the ability to anticipate the camp. A little bit early there. That's a good part of defensive linemen. How quick do you get off the football? Third down and five coming up. Kevin Beard will be to Dorsey's right. Quick snap. Five guys out. Beard's got it. Dragged down at about the eight yard line. He's right about first down yardage. Brought down by Leftwich. 
So Beard with his second catch this afternoon. This is going to be short, Dave. He didn't get a tremendous mark. And the crowd here, mostly Hurricane fans, certainly not pleased with that spot. They got the mark just shy of the eight-yard line. And it looked like the first down he's got to get to the eight-yard line. And if you're Beard or any wide receiver running a pattern on third down, know where the chains are. And he started looking to break the play for touchdown instead of getting upfield. Inches short, trying to break a big play when maybe one was not there. The fourth and one. And they do a reset. 349 to go. Miami leading seven to nothing. They have never lost to the Temple Owls in Big East play. The only win by Temple in this series has to go back to 1930 in Philadelphia, 34 nothing. Temple win. Nine yard line is the official call. Fourth down and in inches. If you're Larry Coker, put the ball in the hands of the running back. You see the center Romber coming off the field. Go behind number 78. Bryant McKenna. He adds a new dimension to big. Six foot nine, 335, folks. Joel Rodriguez is in at center now. Tight end in motion. Oh, he got hit in the backfield. How about that? Raheem Brock. Temple is held. Boy, there was some quickness. Raheem Brock. Tackle for a loss. He's eighth in the conference in sacks, ninth in tackles for a loss, and none bigger than that. 3.41 to go, first period. Temple's going to get the ball again. Long field, but they've held against Miami. From the Orange Bowl, you're watching Biggie's football from ESPN. You got to have fun. A little bit of celebrating does not bother the me. The game itself is fun. The game, these are great athletes playing the game of football. That's a celebration. That's fun. That's because you ain't got no rhythm, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's about individuality, Chris. It's you, called you, professional you football. Act like a professional. Stop talking about. Professional and organized and disciplined. <laughs> They're kids. Let the kids have some fun. Well, I'll show you some fun. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game day band. We are the game day yeah. band. And we're back. Big Ten football. College game day. Thursday nights at 7 on ESPN. Hi, I'm Jeff Kent, and I'm here to talk about ESPN the magazine. You know, when they first asked me to do this, I was pretty excited. They could have had just about any athlete. So to choose me is really something. It's humbling to be able to give something back. So all you young players out there, listen up. ESPN Magazine is only a dollar an issue. They'll even throw in a free fleece. That's right, Jeff. Every when you call 1-800-504-6644, you'll get 26 issues for just a dollar an issue. So call 1-800-504-6644. Thanks for listening to me. Well, well, here at the Orange Bowl, they've got the Rose Bowl. Pasadena bound. That's where they play the BCS National Championship this year. Temple takes over after an outstanding play by Raheem Brock. 7-0 for the Hurricane. Sharks with the call. Ran up the back of one of his blockers. A lot of that to do with fine defensive play. Jamal Green, Jerome McDougal, and DJ Williams there. And how about Brock's play coming from the backside? That's just individual hustle. Going unblocked. And, and what Miami's thinking is, if a defensive end can chase our running back down from behind, let him make the play. And that's exactly what happened. And if you look at the numbers, there's one thing that stands out. Temple has been extremely tough to run against. They're giving up less yards in Miami against the uh, against the rush. That's right. 109 yards a game. Very impressive. Second in the conference. Second down play. Shot for a lot of bodies there. I mean, nowhere to run. William Joseph like a stone wall right up front. And I like what Bobby Wallace is doing from a play call selection. And, and you know, Temple fans are going, why don't you put the ball up? Well, you're looking at a 25, 30 mile an hour win. The best secondary in the nation. Let's state that right up front. No question. This secondary is, is better than anybody in the country. Temple, one out of four on third down conversions today. 
four this season. They're last in the conference at 26 percent. Slant is there. And for a first down to the 22 yard line. They complete the pass. Keshawn Lewis with the tackle with the uh, with the catch. First time we first time we've had a chance to see McGann big time throw Lewis doing a good job getting inside the cornerback rump. This is a huge first down for Temple. Boy, threw that ball nice and low where Lewis could make the catch his 11th of the season. A little bit of breathing room for the outs at the 22. Oh, he stumbled. Tried to break something to the right. They had a little success running to that side in their first couple of possessions. It was Trammer that time. Coming up in the best news for Bobby Wallace. This quarter is going to end and he's going to get to uh, get the ball with the win lose a yard on that play. You know if you're Bobby Wallace there's one thing you want to do use all of this clock currently one minute and thirty five seconds and going run the ball two more times and have the ability to punt with the wind at your back. That's right. So that way he'll get some short field. Second down and 11 21 yard line. Big hole opens up and then closes down quickly. Jonathan Vilman. And one thing you'll know about Miami, you get a hole, you better get through there quickly because the speed here is just remarkable. I'll never forget last year, I was telling you, Jeff, before we got here, doing the Florida State Miami game here last year. I don't remember ever seeing that much speed on one field in a college game, and not too many pro games for that matter. And the thing is, you look at this defense, not overly big by the standard you know 260 pound defensive ends a couple 280 pound defensive tackles. Here's McGann going to throw knocked down the big Paul William Joseph stood up right in the hole they're trying to hit a quick slant to Muckerson. I am surprised by that call by Bobby Wallace. 42 seconds to go in the first quarter. You wonder what an outlaw linebacker is looking at right there get into your drops. We talked about the size. Vilma's only 220 pounds, folks. Yeah, and Jeff, I think a point we made over the last couple of weeks, where's that, why is Temple hurrying here? Well, the clock has stopped. The clock has stopped because of that incomplete pass, but you're right, they, uh, clock management, look out. Well, he got this punt. How about this? Temple finally really gets it out of Arms way, if you will, and gets it all the way downfield to the 25 yard line. A 54 yard punt by Amore. His long is a 62 yarder. He's sixth in the conference this year. So that's a big one. Miami's going to take over at its own 25 yard line with 32 seconds to go here in the first quarter. You can hear the wind 24 at least 25 miles an hour and very well may pick up as we go along here. Dorsey three of six 17 yards and one touchdown to this point. And there's Gore. Frank Gore averaging 10 yards a carry picks up a quick five. Gore is out of Coral Gables right here in Florida. Taylor Suman number 50 for Temple made the tackle. Very excited about seeing this young man. Five foot ten, 190 pounds. He popped off a couple of runs against West Virginia nine days ago on the Thursday night game. Look at those numbers. One for 45 and another for 49 yards. And there you have it. That is the final play of the first quarter. Miami on the strength of a 15 yard Dorsey to Beard pass has a 7 nothing lead. And one quarter is in the books, and here's one of the big plays, the fumble that advanced the ball a good 17 yards for the Hurricanes, and they converted it into this score, 7-0. As we head into the second quarter, you're watching Big East Football from ESPN+. Plus. Ready to start the second quarter, 7-0 Miami over Temple, and let's take a look at our wide out of the week brought to you by Polaris. It's not just the sled, it's a priority. Andre Johnson back on the 25th of October. Those are the numbers against West Virginia. Pretty impressive win by the Canes and so far does not have a catch today as we start the second quarter. Second down and five at the 30. Little rollout by Dorsey. Nice throw. Jeremy Shockey. 
blasted down at the 45 yard line but a first down for Miami and let's get an update from Florida Florida's game with Mike Gleason. Well, Dave Andy moving into the swamp, and it looks like Rex Grossman's ready to put up big numbers again. Shotgun formation, scoreless game. Steps up, lets her fly. Taylor Jacobs goes up and grabs it down to the two yard line. Gain of 48. They scored from there at 7 0 Florida over Vandy. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Mike, uh, we got Dorsey having a good game here. Four of seven, 32 yards and a touchdown. After that completion, the shock is tight end. Here's Gore turning the corner. And they get him before he does any further damage. It's a good thing Terrence Leftwich got there quickly at the corner. Picked up seven. Had he turned the corner, he'd have been gone. And Gore reminds you a little bit of a, a Curtis Martin type of running back. Not overly big. Got that quick step. First quarter stats. Look at time of possession. Temple with 10 minutes and change. Holding Miami to only 35 total yards of offense. Miami heading into the win. Here's a draw. Here's Gore. First down and more. Inside the 40 to the 38. And again, he ran into Leftwich. It's twice now, Leftwich is presented, prevented six. That's a 10 yard pickup. And the one thing I've got, if I'm Larry Coker, and I understand the uh, thinking of this, Frank Gore is obviously the best running back on this football team. Close. Why is he not playing more? Only six carries last week. He only had 124 yards. And I understand what Larry Coker's trying to do. Loyalty to the seniors. Seniority, but get the best football players on the field. Three carries, 23 yards already. Penalty flag. Good ball, false start, gets the offense. Five yards, remains first down. Somebody on the left side, McKinney or Hajay Rasuli. There's uh, the tight end on the bench. He took a heck of a shot. Jeremy Shockey, first team all Big East tight end last year. Will there ever be a bigger catch than he made against Florida State two huge, years ago? Huge drive last year. Huge drive right here. Well, this is this year, right? This year in Atlanta, that's two years, right? Yeah, semantics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> From the 42. Again, Miami heading into the win. Give it out to Beard. And again, that big cushion that Temple gets on the corners. Get back to the line of original line of scrimmage, a five yard pickup. Knocked down by Sean Lacey is there along with number nine Jamal Wallace and you wonder why there's so much cushion from the cornerbacks you know this defensive staff uh, Ray Monica the defensive coordinator what they're trying to do up front is put seven eight people in the box that really puts your cornerbacks on an island sure does now do you want to be out there all day long pressing the wide receivers from Miami no thank you yeah not to mention they get Gore in the game too and he can break one in a heartbeat However, they get him here. Good play. Taylor Suman got an assist, but the original tackle made inside. And that's a good play for the Temple House. That was uh, Almanis Boyle, four yard loss. Still Miami does heading into the win third one. They've got double wides to Dorsey's right. Portis the lone setback. He gets the call, draw. Temple stymies it. Picked up about two, maybe three yards on that play. Very conservative call, and Almanis Boyles again makes the tackle for the Temple Owls. That may tell you about the wind in the Orange Bowl right now. Temple's defense playing awfully inspired. Sure enough, Capshaw got a 59-yard punt on the first possession. See if he goes for the coffin corner. Sure, hanged it high. Can they down it? No, sir. So Temple's going to have the ball at its own 20 after that 38-yard punt. So the Owls, for the first time, will have the ball, will have the wind at their back maybe they can do something with the passing game but so far their defense has done a real nice job you're watching biggie's football from espn plus as an anchor you always want that complete show and coming up a did you know about sports it's okay how are you feeling i'm fine never better i'm, I'm great i can go
Just let me finish, like that. You'll get him next show. Sometimes you don't have your best stuff, so you gotta bring in a closer. We usually handle it like professionals. Thanks a lot. It's all part of the game. You're on in three, two. Welcome back to Sports Center. The subject. Presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. But baseball is a mark of time. This field, this game, it's part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good. It could be again. Oh. People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. You know, athletes are pretty well known for their superstitions, but I gotta be honest, our guys can be pretty quirky too. Have a good show, Kenny. You too. There was this one time Brian had a great show, didn't bathe for 17 days straight. Whereas this year, though, it's been a very different story. The worst had to be when Dan spilled clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder, all over Reese. Had his best show ever. Of course, that got old for Reese really quickly. Yeah. He's in makeup. Okay. We're in a little Ibis head there here in Miami at the Orange Bowl, 7 0. A lot of green and orange. And make sure you join us next week on ESPN Plus. More Big East Game of the Week action. We'll get to see Dwight Franey. What a year he's having. The Syracuse Orangemen on a seven game winning streak they take on the Mountaineers of West Virginia from the Carrier Dome that's next Saturday at noon check your local listings for that game first and ten for Temple at the 20 yard line first time with the win Sharks moves it ahead for about three maybe four Jonathan Vilma was there for the tackle the middle line back along with Vince Wolfork did you see the quickness of Wolfork I mean the guy is huge he only weighs in at 346 pounds. Tremendous penetration by the young man upfield. Watch number 75. There's the penetration. Watch who chases him down, folks. Look at the end of the play. Right there. You get a 346 pound man chasing the ball down like that. That's what you like as a coach. Just don't fall on your own players. That's right. Almost borders on a lead. A little play action. And with time again, steps, throws. Got his man leading receiver, Dillon. First down, Temple. Covered by Edward Reed. Good looking throw by the freshman. You have to ask yourself is this a football team that's only won two out of seven games? Defense very impressive. Their offensive line keeping their quarterback clean. Dillard leads the conference in receptions. Little guy, five foot nine, 162 pounds. McGann's numbers three for five, 32 yards. The biggest number, Dave, no interceptions. Yes, indeed, to the 34 after a 10 yard pickup. They show blitz on the top, run away from it. Nice cut, pretty decent gain by Trammer. Trammer came in averaging 3.2 yards per carry. Matt Walters, number 99 from Melbourne, Florida, with the tackle, number 91. This game for Miami is like a landmine game. No question you know, about this it. This is a game that you have to be emotionally and physically and mentally ready to play this football game. Odds makers say it's a 43 point difference. We haven't seen that thus far. Not at all. Second down and six from the 37 yard line. Again, it's going to go out of the gun. Inside handoff. Running right into the teeth of the defense. McKinnon Fenton. M A K O N N E N. He's out of Somerville, Mass. Brought down by Vilma, who's headed for maybe a 15 tackle day. Pick up about two. The ball is at the 40 yard line. Pick up a third and five. Vilma's been very active. He replaces a super player from last year, Dan Morgan. And Vilma is playing very similarly to Morgan. Temple, two for six on third down today. A little rollout. 
and he slips. My goodness, back to the 28-yard line. He had his tight end, Dan Bosnick, out of Uniontown, open in the flat. Loss of 11 yards, and that's what Bobby Wallace, when he was visiting with us, that's the type of play he described. You get tackled by the Phantom Man on the uh, chalk line. McGann needs to calm down right there. He realizes one thing. He lost his footing. His team loses yards. The key thing that they have to do this afternoon, not turn the football over. You bet. Miami will make you pay. Timeout called by the Temple Owls. And we will take a break as well. 8.50 to go. And Temple trailing to Miami 7-0. You're watching Big East Football from ESPN+. Plus. It's college football season. And that means classic Friday tailgate. Only on ESPN Classic. Every Friday from 1 to 7, witness the greatest game. Touchdown! The Snake does it again! The greatest players and the greatest rivalries in college football history. It's the classic Friday tailgate. Every Friday from 1 to 7. Only on ESPN Classic. The games will come to an end this weekend. But that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day, on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station near you. ESPN Radio. Take it with you. I'm Dan Patrick here in the ESPN Radio Chopper. Radio marketing is all about promotions. That's why we're blanketing the country with these ESPN Radio Bats. We've got live sporting events. We've got call-in shows. You can log on to ESPNRadio.com and find out more about stations in your area. Or you can listen online. So tune in. And if you happen to catch one of these bats, enjoy! Welcome back, everybody. Miami leading 7-0 here against the Temple Owls. Daryl Jones deep to receive this punt from J.C. Amore for the Temple Owls. Jones' first team all Big East kick returner a year ago. With the win, this kick got hammered. Look at this. Jones all the way back to about the 18-yard line and taken down on the first wave. Nice job. And let's check in with Mike Gleason. He's got a report on the Virginia Tech game. Dave, the Hokies were hammered by Syracuse in special teams play. Well, it looks like the Hokies are up to their old tricks. Block kick. That's Larry Austin with the block. And then check it out. Ronyel Whitaker scoops it up. He's off to the races. Another long touchdown on the special teams for Frank Beamer's Hokies. And now it's tied at 7-7 with Pittsburgh. All right, Mike. All right, Mike. Thank you very much. And Virginia Tech has made a living on special team returns against Pittsburgh. Big East football. I'm Dave Sims. Jeff Bostick with us. And the Hurricanes put it in play. And a nice run down the sideline. Quick. Clinton Portis to about the 46-yard line. Pick up of 18. Clinton Portis, look at the job by his tight end and his tackle. Making people miss. Powerful running back. And at Miami, you've got a tough decision. You have so many quality running backs. Who do you give the football to? Unbelievable, isn't it? The freshman Gore, who's 10 yards for carry coming into today's game. Here's Dorsey, backside, didn't see the blitz, throws underneath, tight end. Pick up about seven yards. Jeremy Shockey, his first catch, he got pounded. Wound up going to the sideline. Looks like he's still a little bit dinged up in the, in the head area. Picked up six. Second down and four. Temple side of the ball of the field now. Don't you like Shockey? Look at the bottom where his shoes are uh, coming up. No socks. Yeah, no, go for Ankles tape. Yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't play that way. I hear you. Just a little bit different. Second down play. They run the draw. Portis. Boy, he had any number of holes to pick. Got through the one he did choose and picked up the first down. 
Jason Davis brought him down after the seven yard pickup. That must really be something for a running back. You get the ball and you've got four holes to run through. Which one do you pick? And if you're an offensive lineman, what a treat to block for these guys. Sure. You know, you make a little crease, it could be a home run, especially with 32 in the backfield. Davenport, the fullback. Portis is the tailback. Beard's the wide receiver. Jones, the slot man. Looking for the tight end. Find the tight end. Keeps it alive, close to the first down. Dorsey wanted him all the way. Sean Lacey and Taylor Suman with the stop for Temple. Nine yards on the pickup. Dorsey made no bones about it. I'm going for it to tight end on this play all the way. And Miami's offense have led by uh, Ken Dorsey. They're saying, what wind? Yeah, you know, the wind's not bothering them right now. You have to love this young man's poise. You see the ball wobbling? Tell you one reason, wind. They're doing a tremendous job moving the ball down. This is a very stiff 25, 30 mile an hour win, folks. Every bit, 6.30 to go, second quarter, 7 nothing. Miami over Temple. Portis, cut back. First down and more to about the 24 yard line. Picked up a seven. Jairo Amante with the tackle, number 26 for Temple. And you could hear the pads click up here. <laughs> Portis brings pretty good load there. 5'11, 201. How about this? Having the ability to take your entire receiving core in your backfield out and replace them and not, not really miss a beat. Yeah, you bet. Poor offensive linemen have to stay in there the whole time. Andre <laughs> Johnson and Kevin Beard split wide right. Play action. Dorsey's flush. Dorsey is set. First time since Temple got him last year. And they're saying fumble. But the first time Dorsey's been sacked, the last guy to get him was Akeith Staples last year. This time was Amonese Boyles out of Staten Island, New York. A loss of 19 yards plus a penalty flag. Ray Monica, the defensive uh, coordinator, coming with the, this is a jailbreak, folks. There's about four or five Temple Owls back in the backfield to sack. Number 11, Kim Dorsey. First of the game. Sideline warning for Temple, and the reason was that everybody in the sideline went nuts. They know they were the last team to sack Miami. And you know, help me with this one. Sideline warning for what? Yeah, I know. You know what? This game is about emotion and about showing that emotion. Don't taunt anybody, but certainly when you're on your own sideline, that should not be a problem. Yeah, I agree. They all, I tell you what, it looked like every person Man and woman on that Temple sideline went crazy. Second and 29 from the 43 yard line. Dorsey short out, jockey. Oh man, head to head, he keeps going. Loose ball, it's picked up by Miami. How about that break? They get it down to the 29 yard line. Then he picked up an extra five yards and Shockey just got drilled. Fumble recovered by Ethnic Sands and checked at Kevin Beard. Jeremy Shockey has caught four balls this afternoon two times. He has been absolutely rocked right there, folks. That is a big time collision. And right at the end, ball bops. Yeah, Jamal Wallace with the hit. Miami fortunate they were able to recover this fumble. Ball pops out. You know, Temple's not at all intimidated by this number one ranked Absolutely team from uh, Miami. Gain of 13, still third and long at the 16. Dorsey, flush, throws, heck of a catch inside the 10. That's good for a first and goal for Miami to Kevin Beard. Pickup of 21. How good is Ken Dorsey? Third down and forever. He's found a favorite target, number nine, Kevin Beard. His protection is breaking down a little bit early on this play. It's not how much you scramble. How much can you buy time in the pocket? Just sliding around right there. This is a tremendous throw. Great catch, good concentration. Beard having a fine day. Touchdown, four catches, 47 yards. First and goal at the seven. Portis is the deep back. He gets the call, right side. Couple of good blocks, touchdown Miami. Portis, a seven-yard run, his sixth TD of the season, 13-0 Canes.
Put this touchdown on number 11, Ken Dorsey, making plays after third and forever. You know, everybody's getting to the stage now where they're talking about Heisman candidates. Who's going to win the trophy? If there's anybody more important to their football team than Ken Dorsey, show me. Seavers with another point after. Solid blocking on the right side allowed Portis to have an easy way into the end zone. 14 nothing Keynes. You're watching Big East football from ESPN Plus. Put yourself in the hot seat of ESPN's two-minute drill. Feel your heart pump and your adrenaline build as you race the clock. Now you can be in the hot seat at home. ESPN's two-minute drill, the ultimate sports quiz show, comes to the PC with ESPN's two-minute drill CD-ROM. Test your sports knowledge with host Kenny May and other ESPN personalities such as Rich Eisen, Tom Jackson, and Charlie Steiner. ESPN's two-minute drill CD-ROM. Available wherever software is sold. There's only one neighborhood where the legends compete in the greatest games in history, ESPN Classic. Only ESPN Classic has the greatest games from the NFL, baseball, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, and fights from the largest boxing library in the world. Call 1-800-CLASSIC to get all your favorite classic sports. Plus, Sports Century, the Emmy and Peabody Award winning series that profiles the top 50 athletes of all time and beyond. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Well, the Sports Center is, is live four times a day, but that doesn't mean the other seven broadcasts are straight repeats. It, well, here, look, in this live show, Brian Kenny has his pen in his right hand, but in the rebroadcast, I put the pen in his different hand. And here, then, Linda Cohn is presenting with John Anderson, but in the rebroadcast, I replaced John with El Macho Baracho, the winningest cockfighter in all of Mexico. It's all about keeping it fresh. That's what I do. 14 nothing Miami 351 to go second quarter here at the Orange Bowl number one Miami getting a beautifully executed drive a couple of big plays by Ken Dorsey and, and this after he took a 19 yard sack the first time they've been sacked since Temple got him last year got a completion to Shockey for 13 yards one for to beard for 21 yards and there's your nine play 72 yard scoring drive just under five minutes. Portis four carries for 40 yards and took it in the last seven with a two touchdown lead. Severs into the wind, hangs it high. Taking at the 19 yard line. And boy, I tell you what, there's that speed again, folks. That Miami speed absolutely overwhelmed McKinnon Fenton. Let's get an update on Southern Miss and Penn State with Mike Leeson. Well, since he last week, we kept you up to date as Zach Mills came back and beat the Buckeyes as the quarterback. Now he's scoring as the holder. The freshman from Maryland gets in. It's now 17-7. Penn State on top of Southern Penn State. All right, Mike. All of a sudden, Penn State gets a little offense going after all these uh, these games this season. Let's see what Temple can do here. Trailing by two scores, 3:41 to go. In the second quarter, they run sharp. Shots breaks into the secondary. 25 to the edge. Got the first down to the 29-yard line. Brought down by Edward Reed. Good-looking run by Tenardo Sharps. Gain of 13. You've got to like what you see from Tenardo Sharps, and this offensive line is doing a good job of giving him space to run. One thing you can't tell a running back: you can't give him vision. Yeah, you can give him instruction. This guy has tremendous vision of seeing where the holes are and getting up in the hole. Doing a good job. Ten carries, 40 yards so far. Sharps out of Glen Burnie, Maryland, went to Fort Union Military Academy. First down from the Temple 31. Keep it on the ground. Another nice game. Lester Trammer this time coming up the middle. Jonathan Vilma with the tackle as the clock runs as we approach three minutes to go here in the second quarter. Don't forget coming up, stay with us, the Discover Car at Halftime Report. Take a look in at the Virginia Tech-Pittsburgh game. Check the Big East Wire and first half highlights and stats from this game. Miami, the Hurricane Michelle, heading right at it. Heading right towards Southern Florida. South Florida, right? Second down and six. Inside handoff, Trammer. 
maybe back to the line of scrimmage. A yard tops is all he got on that one. Tackle by Centonio Thomas and Jonathan Vilma. If you're Bobby Wallace, it seems content that you want to try and use as much of this clock. Force Miami to use a timeout if, in fact, they don't convert this third down and four and a half. Let me ask you this. Remember last week we were speculating about somebody taking a deep shot. You've got the wind if you're temper. You've got to take a deep shot at some point, don't you? You've got to stretch the field or you bring the entire Miami defense into the box. There's a quarterback draw again. First down. Taken down by Vilma. Clock at 152. So the quarterback draw very effective. Gain of nine. Nice play by the freshman. Ball to the 45 yard line. Looks like a quarterback draw. Yeah, he gets back, takes the snap. You like this, six foot six, 200 pounds. There's not a lot of meat on that chicken. You know, find the ground, right? See if they take that deep shot. They got Krishan Lewis going far side. Muckerson will be to the bottom of your screen, wide out. Miami secondary showing blitz. They bring blitz, they run right at it into the secondary. And a nice run by Trammer, brought down by Edward Reed. And Trammer really delivered a blow to Edward Reed, the captain on this defensive unit. And you have to question, why is Temple not using a timeout? They've got two remaining, 115 remaining in this uh, first half. Seven-yard gain. At least give yourself an opportunity to try and put points on the board. Ball's in Miami territory at the 48, and the clock running at 103. I would like to know an exploit, you know, somebody to explain to me why they're not using one of their timeouts. Amen. Out of the gun. How about this? They've got the wind, and they keep it on the ground. Boy, that is, I'm really curious about that. Trammer on the carry. Chris Campbell brings him. Now, if you're Miami, you're loving this. And they're still choosing not to use the timeout. Finally. So third down and two at the 47 yard line. And boy, I'd love to talk to Bobby Wallace about that one. 39 seconds ago, you're watching Big East Football from ESPN Plus. Can happen to the best of us. This time it happened to Rich. Keep in touch. He ended up getting sent down. And now for sports. Thank you, Courtney. All JD wrestlers must return their uniforms to coach. He was a real asset down there. His maturity, his experience. Miss Jason, could you buy some beer? Okay, when I go like this, that's your cue. No. Please? No. Come on. No. Do you even go to the school? Because you're not supposed to be on the show unless you go to this school. But we're glad he worked his way back to the show. And I'm sure he is too. So, let's see some James K. Polk spirit. Every Wednesday night from 9 to 11 is Wednesday night college football. It's game of the night only on ESPN Classic. Classic rivalries. Touchdown! Classic legend. Classic bowl. The snake does it again. <laughs> Touchdown, Nebraska. The only place to be for the greatest games in college football is ESPN Classic. Wednesday night college football. Every Wednesday night from 9 to 11. Monday Night Football, they brought in Dennis Miller, so we decided to give our show a little shot in the arm. So while Serena sits at home with an injury, Venus Williams is advancing the final Tennis race. racket! Yeah! NCAA basketball, big dance! And you always have to try new things. You always got to tinker with it, make it better. The Bulls basketball, look. <gasps> Why? Why are we so bad? You know what? It's a very subjective thing. Next Sports Center, one hour from now, with Carrot Top. I'm Carl Ravitch. Thanks for watching, folks. Woo! Smart! Welcome back, everybody. We, right now, want to take this moment to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tires, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Dave Simpson, Jeff Bostick with you. Temple with the ball, trailing 14-0. They've taken a good minute and change off the clock. This drive so far, six plays, 35 yards, and 312 has elapsed since they took control. Maybe and once they cross the 50-yard line, Dave, they burn one minute of the clock. That's right. The wind is at Temple's back, a big factor this afternoon. Maybe this is where they take a deep shot. Play action, McGinn. Throwing, and through the hands of the fullback, Jason McKee out of Navarre, Florida. Boy, oh boy. That is some unusual. I'll be, let's cut to the chase, some strange play call. You almost ask yourself, are they playing to try and stay close, or are they trying to win this football game? Boy, that was, I tell you what, that was the strangest possession I've seen all year, pro or college. 
again three of six for 32 yards past. Mari to punt. Plus news is that he's going to be punting with the win. Hangs it high. And a catch made at the 20. Look at this. Look at this. Ta-da! He got tripped up. He had a convoy down the sideline. They had a scoring possibility there. Good luck in return. Edward Reed, dangerous on the catch down there. You wonder why he's catching the ball inside of his own five yard line. All good punt returners have the ability to make the first guy miss. Ed Reed gets kind of tripped up right there. He and number eight, Mike Rump, kind of bump feet, and you can see the frustration. Ed knew he had a convoy going down the right side of the field. Boyle's got a piece. I tell you, he had a good six, seven guys in front of him. Well, let's see what Miami does. Looks like Miami's they're just going to take a knee. I'm telling you, that is the most unusual. That doesn't surprise me taking a knee there, 14 nothing. But what was Temple thinking with the win, take no deep shots at all to end the first half? And when you look on the scoreboard, the number is still zero for the Owls. Wow. You stick around long enough, you see it all. First half in the books here at Miami. Kane's number one in the nation. They've got a 14 nothing lead. Dave Simpson, Jeff Bostick with you here in Miami. We'll be back shortly, but right now we send you to Mike Gleason in our Sports Center studio. We are ready to start the second half. Dave Simpson, Jeff Bostick with you. Temple Owls will have the wind to their back as they kick it off. Cap Pacalumba, junior from Westminster, Maryland, puts his foot into it, drives it, and we're going to bring it out. 10-15, that's Andre Johnson. And Johnson gets to about the 22-yard line. Taking a look at our first-half statistics. And the one that jumps out at you is Temple's ability to run the football, only 32 yards passing. We still don't understand what happened with clock management before the end of the uh, first half. Temple doing what they want to, controlling the time of possession. The big key, no turnovers for the Temple offense. Here comes Miami. Ken Dorsey at the controls. Clinton Portis, the deep back. Najee Davenport is the fullback. He goes in motion. Portis trying to turn the corner. Pretty good job there. Gain up to about the 24-yard line. Pick up three. Dan Klecko came over to make the tackle. Had some help from Dante Coles. There's no quit in this Temple team, and that's one thing that really stood out when we visited with Bobby Wallace this week. He said, our team is still playing hard. We talked about a one and a half hour meeting, and I think what Bobby was trying to convince his team with, if you accept losing, you step on the field expecting to lose, bad things happen. You've seen a tremendous effort so far in the first 30 minutes. Sure enough, Dorsey throws over the middle. Whoa, almost a heck of a catch by Beard. Boy, did he lay out at about the 42-yard line. How about the quick snap throw by Dorsey? Good looking throw. How about Temple's ability to collapse the pocket? Beard, obviously a favorite receiver this afternoon. Almost a circus catch. Tip your hat to Mr. Dorsey. Throwing into this type of wind is not easy. Well, you gotta have a gun to get it done. Let me tell you, Johnson will go far to Dorsey's left. No flags, Dorsey throws off his back foot. Favorite receiver, Shockey, first down, 35 on his feet, 40, 45. Can they catch him? 40, 40, inside the 40 to the 35-yard line. First down, Miami. Taylor Suman finally ran him down a gain of 41 yards. And this is a play that takes a long time. Jeremy Shockey going all the way across the formation. He's at the right of your screen. You know, just dragging across the middle. Somebody blew a coverage right there. Shockey wide open, and he shows you one of the benefactors of being six foot six, 246 pounds. Only a junior. This guy will play on Sunday in two years. No doubt about it. Five catches, 84 yards, 41 yards, not as long as he had a 56 yarder earlier this year. From the 35, first and 10 for Miami. Dorsey gonna throw into the wind again. Oh, he got hit, got rid of it, almost picked off! 
Ryan Teague, a Keith Staples put a lick on Dorsey. And that ball got down into the secondary and had a chance for a pick down there. You can tell that Ken Dorsey is not used to being knocked around in the pocket. Temple doing a good job once again of collapsing the pocket. You know, how often do you see Bryant McKinney, the big left tackle, the Outland Trophy uh, Lombardi Award candidate, being pushed back into the backfield? Staples had a chance for the interception. Portis for about four. Suman was there. Gonna bring up a third and about third and about six. Ball at the 31 yard line. You know, Miami's Larry Coker trying to do something that has never been done in NCAA Division I football. Never has a first year coach, rookie coach, had two first year offensive and defensive coordinators and ever won a national championship. Third and six. Outside. They've got ethnic Sands, and Sands taking a shot at the first down. That's a nice play by Sean Lacey. And he's going to be about a half a yard short. Five-yard pickup. Lacey with a nice play. And going against the wind, Dave, you only have one choice. I think they're going to go for it on fourth down. Here comes Severs, though. They're going to go for it, all right. They're going to go for the field goal. And that is not a play that the Miami fans are real thrilled about. Give Sean Lacey a lot of credit. That was a tremendous open field tackle. 43 yards on this field goal attempt. This would be a season best, his best a 42-yarder at Penn State. Penalty flags from the back judges. I think Temple's got 12 people on the oh, field. Brother, you believe this? They exactly, 12 people were on the field. That is a mental mistake. Sure is. Bobby Wallace, one of his quotes from the other day when he spoke with us, we found a way. Illegal substitution, defense. 12 guys in the huddle for more than three seconds. Five yard penalty, first down by penalty. How about that? That is not being into the football game. They go over this week in, week out, and this is not like this is the first or second week of the season. If you're on the field goal block team, you know who you are. Get on the field, get lined up. Boy, put a circle around that one on the scorecard. This very well could turn into a six. Dorsey not wasting any time. He's going for it now. Buys time. Somebody comes alive. Throw. Catch at the 11-yard line. It's Shockey, his main man again. What a catch. He's got a nine-yard pickup. We talked about it earlier, Dave. The advantages of being six foot six. It took every inch of his six foot six body to haul this one in. Circus catch, no question. Six catches, 93 yards. And look how he stays active, coming back to the football. Quarterbacks, tight ends, receivers knowing one another. Second down and one. There is a play action down if there ever was one. Play action, throw it. Man open. Touchdown, Miami. Andre Johnson, his seventh of the year. It's 11 yard score. 20 to nothing, Miami. In the 2000 season, everybody talked about the catch by Jeremy Shockey. This was the drive by Jeremy Shockey. Huge reception to start the third quarter and two big ones to add to it. Boy, and Andrew's money in the bank. Exactly 11 minutes to go, third quarter. Nine plays, 78 yards, four minutes off the clock. The first catch by Johnson today, and it's a beauty. An 11-yarder on the play action by Dorsey. The kid is so poised, he makes it look easy. We go to break with Miami leading 21 to nothing. You're watching Big East Football from ESPN+. Plus. As an anchor, you always want that complete show. And coming up, a did you know about sports. Okay. How are you feeling? I'm fine. Never better. I'm, I'm great. I can go. Just let me finish like that. You'll get him next show. Sometimes you don't have your best stuff, so you got to bring in a closer. Trevor, we usually man. handle it like professionals. Thanks a lot. It's all part of the game. 
You're on. In three, two. Welcome back to Sports Center. The subject. Presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. But baseball, it's market time. This field, this game, it's part of our past, Ray. Reminds us of all that once was good. It could be again. Oh. People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. You know, athletes are pretty well known for their superstitions, but I gotta be honest, our guys can be pretty quirky too. How was show, Kenny? You too. There's this one time Brian had a great show, didn't bathe for 17 days straight. Whereas this year, though, it's been a very different story. The worst had to be when Dan spilled clam chowder, Manhattan clam chowder, all over Reese. Had his best show ever. Of course, that got old for Reese really quickly. Yeah. He's in makeup. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Ken Dorsey, what a day he's having. That last drive, 4 of 6, 66 yards and a touchdown after 9 of 12, 88 yard, one touchdown, first half. And I'll bat the Pittsburgh Panthers. Virginia Tech getting hammered at Heinz Field, 24 to 7. This coming after Syracuse put one on them last week down in Blacksburg and here's that last Miami score. You called it with the play action and what a route. You know you, you look at this offense there are so many weapons Dave. You know do you choose to bleed slowly through the running attack Andre Johnson with the touchdown catch. The one thing about it Temple once again penalized themselves 12 people yep. in the huddle. We found ways to beat ourselves and boy that was that was as bad a one as, as we've seen all year. When you've got a team going for a 43 yard field goal. Short kick taken. Down at the 21 yard line to about the 26 yard line. That returned by Harold Jackson, a backup. Backup fullback. Well, Benny Oosterbond, first coach to first, take first, over. First year head coach to win a national championship. 1948, right? You think Larry Coker's trying to? How about the Yankees? You know, look at this squad. 1948 Michigan Wolverines. How many players on the roster? 35. They weren't handing out nearly as many scholarships then. The only thing they were handing out were letter jackets. Well, Temple's got 10:53 to have the wind at their backs. They keep it on the ground. Jonathan Vilma with the tackle. And Larry Coker, 6 and 0, trying to join Benny Oosterbund. Here's with some other first year coaches who began 6 and 0. And how about the guy, Larry Coker, spent 21 years as a college assistant. You talk about paying your dues, being at the right place at the right time. And Butch Davis should always get a Christmas card from Larry Coker because he left the cupboard full. Sure did. Butch Davis, coach of the year in the Big East last year. Miami showing blitz. They bring blitz. Nowhere to go for Sharks. They run up the middle. And again, Miami watching Temple with the wind and the Owls playing extraordinarily conservative here. They've got 10 minutes left with this win for the rest of the day. And if you're just joining us, very curious clock management to end that lat the first half. 27 rushes to six pass. They did not log the forward pass by Temple, did they? <laughs> I think they can still throw the ball, right? Third down and seven. You wonder what goes on inside the huddle when you continue to hear those amount of runs called. Yeah, Miami, 18 runs, 18 passes. McGann throw drop, 32-yard line. Hit the receiver, his best receiver, Dillard, right in the hands. A three and out for Temple. And what we've seen from McGann, I like the way he throws the football. You know, big kid, looks like he'll sit in there and take a, uh, a pounding, which he just received from uh, Joseph. 
When you're down 21 nothing, you have to start stretching the field. You have to put the ball in the air. Regardless of weather conditions, everybody's got to play in the same one. They're very curious. Movement by Temple penalty flags. You saw a couple of flinches there. One of the deep backs on the right, somebody on the left, and there was somebody on the left side in the O-line. And that movement may have been fortunate for Temple. Ed Reed came clean. We could have been talking a block punt. So now, Temple penalties five for 41. The Owls, the fifth most penalized team in the conference. And how about Miami, the most penalized team in the conference with 104.7 yards. Miami just one for five today. And Bobby Wallace stating his uh, case to the officials to uh, no avail. Yeah, that is good. 9.29 to go, third quarter, 21-0 Miami, low snap, they go after him. Lori gets it off. On the 35, you can looking for a wall. And gets it, and a penalty flag late as he advanced the ball to the 48-yard line. Cannon brought it back, brought down by Al Almanis Boyles. 42 yards on the punt, a nine-yard return. This penalty against Miami. Doing a return, illegal block in the back, above the waist, return team. 10 yards, in spite of the foul, will be first down. John Smith, our referee today. Bad decision there by number 23. That was James Lewis. Time out on the field here at the Orange Bowl, 9-12 to go third quarter. Keynes with a three touchdown lead. From Miami, you are watching Big East Football from ESPN Plus. It's college football season, and that means classic Friday tailgate. Only on ESPN Classic. Every Friday from 1 to 7, witness the greatest game. Touchdown! The snake does it again! The greatest players and the greatest rivalries in college football history. It's the classic Friday tailgate. Every Friday from 1 to 7. Only on ESPN Classic. The games will come to an end this weekend, but that doesn't mean you have to leave the worldwide leader in sports at home. Because the news, interviews, and analysis from your favorite ESPN personalities continues all day, every day, on over 600 radio stations nationwide. Check your local listings to find the ESPN radio station near you. ESPN Radio. Take it with you. I'm Dan Patrick here in the ESPN Radio Chopper. Radio marketing is all about promotions. That's why we're blanketing the country with these ESPN Radio Pats. We've got live sporting events. We've got call-in shows. You can log on to ESPNRadio.com and find out more about stations in your area. Or you can listen online. So tune in. And if you happen to catch one of these bats, enjoy! Welcome back to Miami, everybody. Dave Sims and Jeff Bostic with you. Big East football from Miami. We're at the Orange Bowl. Canes lead at 21 nothing. The time now for We Know You, brought to you by Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. Greg Mark, an outstanding career here at the University of Miami. First team All-American in 1989. Third round pick of the Giants in 1990. Won a couple of national championships. Now on the coaching staff here at U of M. Psycho. Shirko and Haji Rasuli, the left guard, went to the locker room, cramped up. Here's Frank Gould to the edge. Nice, solid tackle by Yazid Jackson. Jackson, a sophomore from Sayreville, New Jersey. Gore was in a hurry, and I think he, he was thinking six spot. And what is happening in Pittsburgh? The Panthers coming alive offensively. Sometimes, Dave, when you lose a game the way Virginia Tech lost to Syracuse, if you're not careful, they'll follow one. And that's exactly what we're seeing in the Sure enough. Penalty flag on the play. Gore. Straight ahead for about four, but a penalty flag. Got to believe it'll be on Temple. Some premature movement. Taylor Suman on the tackle. 
And you know that little piece, we know you? Mm -hmm. At halftime, I went down and, you know, you've got to eat if you're a hog. Right? <laughs> you got to go find something to eat, right? And you talk about Miami and people that have played in the pros. This is not a we know you, I know you. Ted Hendricks. Offsides, defense, five yard penalty, remains second down. Ted Hendricks played here back in the 60s. Probably more known for his days with the uh, Oakland Raiders. Kind of one of the uh, real freaky type of guys, uh, real tall type of linebackers before that was fashionable. The Mad Stork played with the Colts in Baltimore, then went out with the Raiders. Najee Davenport, they give him a little taste. Well, he was jogging with somebody about two plays ago, so he got a chance to maybe get in there and do a little sluggo. Clock running, coming up on eight minutes to go. Third quarter. Big East football coming to you, everybody, from the Orange Bowl here in Miami. Temple taking on the number one team in the country, the Hurricanes of the University of Miami. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostic. Miami with a score in the first quarter. Ken Dorsey to Beard for 15 yards. In the second quarter, Clinton Portis a seven yard run. Third quarter, Dorsey an 11 yard TD pass to Johnson, 21 nothing, and that's where we are right now. Third down and two at the 41. Good throw. Outside, stiff arm effective. Jason Gathers, his first catch. You see that Jackson on the tackle, but a first down for Miami. Pickup of 10. And you see the uh, stiff arm. That is the lost art. Mm -hmm. You don't see the guys, the running backs and wide receivers, implementing the old stiff arm. I still remember as a kid watching Jim Brown. Oh, Did anybody yeah. have a better stiff arm than Jim Brown? The hammer of Thor. <laughs> Man, oh man, Jim Brown, I tell you what, that was Sonny Liston hitting you with the right hook. And he went to Syracuse on a lacrosse scholarship. Yep. Dorsey looked down his progressions, Gore in open field. Look out, nice move. Great tackle though by Sean Lacey. Saved further damage. Lacey, boy, I tell you what, he saved the sixth spot on that one, didn't he? Gore That's with a 14-yard pitch and catch. What type of weapon is it to get the ball into the hands of a guy like Gore in the open field? This is the open field, folks. You do not know how hard it is to tackle a guy like that one-on-one. -on -one. Sean Lacey with a good job. Look at his numbers for the afternoon. 15 for 20, but 178 that. yards and two touchdowns. Out of the eye. Average game, huh? <laughs> yeah. Beard in motion. Gore gets the call. Looking for a home run ball. He's into about the 28-yard line. I tell you what, Yazid Jackson has played one heck of a third quarter. As it is, the game goes from the 35 to the 28, a seven-yard pickup. And you know, everybody, when we're walking into the stadium this morning, Dave, they wanted to talk about one thing, the BCS, the oh, BCS, man. the BCS. Wow. One dude wouldn't leave it alone. He was fired up. <laughs> and, and he wasn't going to leave until I gave him the right answer. And that answer was? I would have to agree. I think Miami's the best team in the country. You know what? It's not up to me. Pump and go. Ball. Yeah, they're going to win. Oh, and it works out. It's still. There's a penalty flag. Reach in. Got some face mask. Sean Lacey. Andre Johnson was there. Dorsey did all he could to throw that ball down, and the win ate it alive. And it still almost worked out for Miami because of the fine adjustment by Andre Johnson. Watch the top of your screen, Andre Johnson, number five. This is one of the advantages of a ball being underthrown. You see Lacey's left arm across the chest. Watch the left arm right there. That is a no-no. I'm sorry, though, folks. There's not a lot of contact there. Did it prevent Johnson from catching the ball? The officials thought so. Yes, interference called, so first and ten for Miami. And that's one of the penalties I don't agree with. You know, it should be like the pros. If you're going to prevent a guy from being inside the five, give him the ball at the five. I guess when I get my own college league, I can, I can implement any rules I'd like to, right? <laughs> to the Otherwise, be quiet and watch the game and enjoy it. <laughs> at the distance. Actually, having it from the, from the spot. Dorsey, oh, good block. Got time. Got some people running free. Took a shot at... Johnson down there, couldn't get it to him. 
You saw that thing projectile through the air. That was number 89, Raheem Brock. We go back to that one statement Bobby Wallace told us when we visited with him this week. Our team does not quit. These guys have played hard. You certainly see evidence of that this afternoon. Ethnic Sands goes wide to the left. Tight end, wing on the right, man in motion as Robert Williams. Gore breaks it back against the green, to the five, stays on his feet, touchdown Miami! Frank Gore, 13 yards on the score, his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. 27 nothing Miami. And this is a play that is designed to go off the left side of the offensive line. You talk about it so much. The vision of a running back. What great vision this young man has. Severs with the point after is good. So it's 6.06 to go. Third quarter here at the Orange Bowl. The Canes, the number one team in the nation. After the Frank Gore touchdown run has a 28 to nothing lead over the Temple House here at the Orange Bowl. You're watching Biggie's Football from ESPN+. Plus. Put yourself in the hot seat of ESPN's two-minute drill. Feel your heart pump and your adrenaline build as you race the clock. Now you can be in the hot seat at home. ESPN's two-minute drill, the ultimate sports quiz show, comes to the PC with ESPN's two-minute drill CD-ROM. Test your sports knowledge with host Kenny May and other ESPN personalities such as Rich Eisen, Tom Jackson, and Charlie Steiner. ESPN's two-minute drill CD-ROM. Available wherever software is sold. There's only one neighborhood where the legends compete in the greatest games in history, ESPN Classic. Only ESPN Classic has the greatest games from the NFL, baseball, NBA, NHL, NASCAR, and fights from the largest boxing library in the world. Call 1-800-CLASSIC to get all your favorite classic sports. Plus, Sports Century, the Emmy and Peabody Award winning series that profiles the top 50 athletes of all time and beyond. To get ESPN Classic, call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Well, the Sports Center is, is live four times a day, but that doesn't mean the other seven broadcasts are straight repeats. Yeah, well, here, look, in this live show, Brian Kenny has his pen in his right hand, but in the rebroadcast, I put the pen in his different hand. And here, then, Linda Cohn is presenting with John Anderson, but in the rebroadcast, I've replaced John with El Macho Baracho, the winningest cockfighter in all of Mexico. It's all about keeping it fresh. That's what I do. Well, Heisman look, and that could be pretty apropos here at the University of Miami, where Ken Dorsey is certainly in the running. Yeah, but that trophy looked like it had five fingers. I mean, the, the thumb was as long as the other ones. <laughs> what a team this Miami club is. They have taken advantage of a couple of big plays now. They had a, two big fumble recovers first half that uh, maintained possession and took him in the scores here in the second half an illegal substitution played by temple extended a drive they cashed it in then a pass interference on this last drive by lacy it was the frank gore drive 13 yard td run he had three rushes for 21 yards and a catch for 14 to increase the score to 28 nothing wonder if they pick on the sideline before the offense goes in the first drive of the second half, it was the Jeremy Shockey drive. That's right. This past drive, it was the Frank Gore drive. Severs kick off into the wind, hanging up there. Taking it about the eight yard line, and the field opens up rather nicely here for Temple. And down the sideline with one man to beat. A great return. And that was McKinnon Fenton. Good looking return. Temple in good position maybe to get on the board here as they get it into Miami territory at the 42 yard line. Mr. Fennon shows a little bit of his running back skills. Miami very fortunate. 51 yards on that return. Miami very fortunate at the end of that play they didn't get flagged for another 15 yards for a face mask. That's right. So the Owls. Before this drive, their average starting position was the 18-yard line. Now they get from the 42-yard line of Miami. Play action began, rolling, throwing, can't hit his tight end. Tried to get it to Eric Carpenter. 
51 yard kickoff return. If you're Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator for Miami, I'll guarantee you the one thing he told his football team, let's don't let up. That's right. You know, we want to keep that goose egg on the board. Randy Shannon is a uh, interesting story. We'll talk about this after this play. Second and 10 from the 42 after Fenton's career best 51 yard kickoff return. Play action. The kid stays in. Got a man overthrows. Muckers hit. Look out. That's a pick by Edward Reed. He's got a convoy down the sideline. Stays alive. Edward Reed still alive. And finally brought down at the 40, and that's a record-breaking interception by Edward Reed, his 19th of his career. And ties Benny Blade for Miami's career record. That's his seventh of the season. And penalty flags back at the Miami 48-yard line. Miami guilty of an illegal block below the waist. 19 return. Illegal block. Below the waist. Return team. 15 yards. The spot of the foul. It will be first down. You see Ed Reed's 19th career uh, interception. The ball just simply sails on McGann. Muckerson, number 11, with no chance to make a catch. You know, this is one of those interception returns, Dave, where you could almost throw a flag for delay of game. This may have been the longest yeah. interception return we've seen all year. The original return, 28 yards before the penalty sets it all the way back to the 33-yard line. Edward Reed with a pick. Miami. First down, Blake Johnson. Nice tackle. Again, Yazid Jackson. Jackson's done an outstanding job here, third quarter. He must be up around seven tackles. How about Miami? Leading the country, 16 total today with the plus one. And the thing that stands out here, Dave, when you look at this uh, turnover margins, Penn State obviously down. Rutgers, you've got some teams. You wonder why the BCS has Miami where they are. Try to go outside with Portis. Cuts it back. Look at his speed. First down, Miami. Jackson ran him out of bounds. 16-yard pickup. You can't teach speed. And it's like an automobile accident. Speed kills. Lofton Thompson, the strong safety for Temple. Portis is right there cutting back. Thompson is in tremendous position. It's like our uh, former head coach Joe Gibbs used to say, never over handicap your speed. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great line. You know, Thompson did everything right but had the ability to run 4-3. Portis again, cuts it up. Got hammered but picked up eight. Van Klecko, Troy Bennett. On the tackle. Eight yard pickup for Clinton Portis. Miami's going to get the ball back in about a little under four and a half, and they'll be going with the wind. Second down, going a long two. And Miami's got some of their backup offensive linemen into the game. I noticed that. Going to start running those guys down. Ball. Vernon Carey, number 60, playing right tackle. Gonzalez switched over to the left side. Straight up the middle, Najee Davenport for the first down for Miami. And let's get another update on the Southern Miss Penn State game. Let's, here's Mike Gleason in our Sports Center studios. Well, Simsy, people are wondering uh, if Joe Paterno would win a game this year. Well, after back to back victories, now they're on a roll. Larry Johnson with the block punts. Now, if they win today, they'll go to three and four. They still have four games to play. It's 38 7 in Happy Valley. Dave? Finally, some sustained smiling up in Happy Valley. Edward Reed being acknowledged by the fans here at the Orange Bowl. First and 10 for the Canes at the Temple 43. Dorsey going to throw. Over the middle, throw it behind. Shot and triple covered. <laughs> Three minutes, he was still going to go to him. 
And I don't know that I've seen players. I think Jeremy Shockey and uh, also Ken Dorsey, two of the guys, look at their shoes, folks. Looks like they've got the taped ankles with no socks on. I don't quite, I don't understand the comfort in that. It's a generational thing, my man. Socks are not that important, right? I guess not. But I know, I know where you're coming from. Second down and 10. And they'll stop that one. Dead ball, false start, offense. Five yard penalty remains second down. Might have been somebody Eight. in the offensive line with some of the second string guys in there. Well, as well as uh, Miami's playing, maybe the hottest team in the league right now is Syracuse. The Orangemen will play host to the West Virginia Mountaineers next Saturday. We will be there to look at James Mungro having an outstanding campaign for the Orangemen. That's a noontime start next Saturday. Check your local listings for Big East football next Saturday. Here from ESPN Plus. I don't want to uh, frighten the West Virginia fans. Syracuse has not lost a game we've broadcast. <laughs> I'm sure Mike Parsons and company wanted to hear that. Trying to get it to Shockey again, running the seam pattern. That's the very same play they beat Florida State on last year. When we talk about the BCS and, you know, Miami playing a relatively soft schedule, well, they're going to finish up with a uh, Donnybrook. You know, we talked about Boston College. They haven't played them yet. Much improved team. Syracuse may be as hot as anybody in the country. They still have Virginia Tech. I'll promise you Larry Coker's hoping Virginia Tech comes back and wins that game this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and they finished the season with uh, Washington. That's right. Out of the gun this time. Third and 15. Three of seven on third down. Dorsey's going to run in. Stays alive. He's looking at the sticks. Nice. Oh, he got hit. Good hit. That's Sean Lacey. Lacey very effective. He had a wide open shot in the quarterback and he didn't. I tell you what, he came through with that 12 yards in the pickup. And he didn't waste the opportunity, did he? Did you hear the big gasp of oh, air yeah. from the sideline? Yes, sir. Dear Lord, there goes our schedule. Listen to this, folks. A little head snappage, boys and girls. That's when the watch gets knocked into the other pocket, right? Fourth and three, 36 yard line, 2.49 to go. First four, 0 for 1 on fourth down today. Portis calls timeout. He saw something he didn't like. He saw the play clock running down to zero. That's one of the advantages of having your tailback in an up position. <laughs> yeah. Now bring on the punt team. They didn't give him the timeout. No, they didn't. And this is not an easy place to see the 25 second clock. Boy, You'll it's notice it's perched down in the corners. You off know, to the side, to on the near side. On Larry, behind Larry Cooker to his right, so. And there's another one on the far side. Here's Severs for the punt. Check that, pretty capture. It's coming back. How about that? Good call. The ball was over the goal line at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, folks, 20, at least a 25 mile an hour win, 29 yards on that punt. Time now for a look at the Army of One, brought to you by the United States Army. And how about the, Uni the uh, U University of Miami, what they have done here, three national championships. In the 80s, that 1989 team really was very productive, led the nation in total and scoring defense. Temple with the ball, very deep in its own territory. His running back just got abused. Tenardo Sharps tried to take it up the middle, and there was nowhere to go. Howard Clark, DJ Williams on the stop. You're talking about a school that has put some players into the pros, Dave. As of June 1st of this year, the University of Miami had 51 players in the National Football League. 51. To this point, well, that's a very significant number. And we've seen them, a lot of these guys on some. Is blitz blown up. Beautiful play. Chris Campbell. He timed that baby perfectly. 
perfectly. He was blitzing up the middle, and DJ Williams was coming from McGann's right. Never had a chance, all the way back to the six-yard line. Miami is bringing more than Temple can block. Watch 48, the bottom of your screen. Timing is blitz perfectly. He almost took the handoff. I know. Loss of seven on that play. There's so much for the, uh, the total yardage number for the Temple Owls now for the game is 80 yards compared to 296 for the Miami Hurricanes and 115 to go here in the first half. Keep it on the ground for about two. So the Owls see Howard Clark make that tackle again, and that's a quick possession. This defensive unit, they're going to have to really roll their tongues back into their mouths. They are seeing a lot of field time here in the second half. The offense has done absolutely nothing. Keen defense has really risen up. Started to slap Temple around a little bit. Now, if you're Larry Coker in a 28 point lead, do you start going to some of your reserves and get your starters out of the lineup? Absolutely. See if they go after this punt. With the win, got an end over end job. Buchanan from the 48. Plenty of space, eludes the first wave. Looking for help, got the help. Found the orange jersey. Look out! Here he goes! To the 10! Buchanan, his second touchdown of the season. The junior out of Fort Myers, Florida, makes it 34 0. That was gorgeous. And that's the third different punt returner we've seen this afternoon from Miami. Point after, no problem by Seavers. We told you in the open a whole bunch of ways that Miami can hurt you. And Temple simply outkicks their coverage. A low line drive end over end. Buchanan, every punt returner will make the first guy miss. Look at the blocking downfield. Great vision, too. And when you get in the open field with a guy like Buchanan and a punter, Forget no contest. It. Little zig, little zag, put a six on the board, and that's the ninth touchdown for Miami via special teams and defense. And you know what? All, all the punt returners and all the wide receivers, they know where the cameras are. What is that? Absolutely. Well, that's part of their great vision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they yeah. come out and be a pregame warm up. Dude, where are the cameras? The placement's over here? Okay, okay. good. I'm going to play this one. Okay. That's a great return. And like you said, with the win, end over end kick, he out kicked his coverage by a good 15 yards. And we've seen we've seen Andre Johnson return a punt. We've seen Daryl Jones back there returning punts. How, how do you choose? I know you, you got to be just, flipping a coin, right? Just throw a third red back there and say, "Have at it." And again, another example of that sick Florida speed, Jeff. You know, watch watch the uh, the burst of speed right here. Buchanan makes a few cuts. And you know he's still hunting and picking right now. You know he's he's jogging a four oh, five. Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Still running a four five, just kind of half step. And this is when he kicks it into a different gear. When you see these guys, they have times control. Do zig and zag. You know you're in trouble. Outscoring a. Our shoulder was shot in the arm. So while Serena sits at home with an injury, Venus Williams is advancing Venus the finals. Williams, tennis racket! Yeah! NCAA basketball, big dance. And you always have to try new things. You always got to tinker with it, make it better. The Bulls basketball look. <laughs> Why? Why are we so bad? You know what? It's a very subjective thing. Next Sports Center, one hour from now with Carrot Top. I'm Carl Ravitch. Thanks for watching, folks. Woo! Smart! Look at me, I'm a football like. I feel so free inside. Ah, Kirk! Kirk, look, it's you and me. I have to go. I have to go, I'm sorry. It's you and me, Kirk. I'm a football like I did. Kirk! And we're back. College game day.
presented by Discover Card. Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. Hey, Boilermaker. Yeah? Got my curve breaking two and a half feet. Oh, yeah? Then you have been practicing, huh? But don't give me no baloney about a curve breaking two and a half feet, though. For how much? Ten bucks. Make it twenty. We got a bet. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Well, when you got the number one team in the nation wearing your colors, a lot of reason to be happy here in Miami. Ken Dorsey. When you got this guy as your quarterback, it's hard to, uh, you know, have any complaints about your offense. Look at his number, 16 for 24. We talked about this being quarterback university. How would you like to have been a member of the 82 Miami Hurricane squad? From left to right, Testa Verde, 18. How about number 12, Jim Kelly? Earl Marl, the quarterback coach. Mark Rick, the head coach at the University of Georgia. And why don't we throw in Bernie Kosar? Hey, boys, how are you? Know, you know the happiest person there? <laughs> Earl Marl. How hard is it to coach all of those quarterbacks, folks? Here's what we're going to do, fellas. Starting the fourth quarter, Dave Sims, Jeff Bostic with you at the Orange Bowl. Windy conditions, and speaking of wind, Temple's going into it. Good second effort here. Get to the court. First down for the Owls. Banged out of bounds by Mike Rump. Good carry by McKinnon Fenton. Fenton with two really good kick returns and going to get some playing time carrying the ball from scrimmage. Penalty flag on the play. Got another score here. To, how about West Virginia? We'll see them. They'll come into Syracuse next week when we see them a lot happier. Second quarter, just under eight to go. West Virginia leading series at uh, leading Rutgers 38 nothing in Morgantown. Looks like this play is going to be brought back. You have to like what you see in Fenton. Yep. Guy that makes a decision and shows he's got a little bit of speed. That's right. He sees that hole. No sense messing around. Go for it. After the play, we have a dead ball. Lay hit against the defense. We also have a dead ball, personal foul, offense, unnecessary roughness. Those penalties will offset. The result of the play is a first down. John Smith sounded a little winded there. Early stages here in the fourth quarter. Temple's got the ball at the Miami 45. Seven yards on that game. You know, if you look at the uh, glass being half empty or half full for Temple, one thing that should bring, uh, you know, some type of relief to the Temple fans, they've got 10 restarters coming back on the offensive squad. Yep. 10 returning starters. Blitz coming. It's like a fumble. And recovered by Miami. Saw the blitz coming, got anxious. Recovered by Santonio Thomas, high school All-American out of Glade Central. Jose Portillo was the new center and some difficulties there. Second turnover this afternoon by Temple. I don't know what McGann is thinking right there. There comes occasions when the center will snap the ball early. You have to be ready for it and try and react. I think most of Temple is kind of like uh, McGann right now. This third quarter was really more than they could handle. 21 points put on the board by the Canes. Ken Dorsey's day is gone, is done. Derek Crudup, redshirt freshman from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Gonna get a chance to run the show right now. Look at his hand on a jet right up the middle. Clinton Portis for nine. Crudup is completing 53% of his passes, 76 yards, no picks, no touches yet. Got a long gain of 19. He's run the ball for 21 yards. How many football players can one state produce? I'm telling you, remember when uh, when we several times we've been to Rutgers and uh, Mike Ciano said uh, the thing he's going to do, recruit every high school in the state of New Jersey, plus Dade, Palm Beach, and Broward, Broward County. And, and that there's your answer. First down, Portis looking for more. They are absolutely relentless, folks. Raheem Brock with the tackle. Eight-yard pickup. 
We're getting a look at some of these second unit folks. And good news for Miami, by the way, one of their first teamers, the left guard, Shirko Haji Rasuli, is back in the game number 74. Along with the left tackle, uh, McKinney. Maybe this, this could be their last go around. Vernon carries it right tackle for Joaquin and Gonzalez. First and 10 inside the 40, 37 yard line. Credit, first passing attempt on the run. Heck of an effort. Did they give him the catch? No, sir. Jason Gethers tried to bring it home. And let's go to our Sports Center studio. Mike Gleason, what do you have, Mike? Well, Dave, earlier Jeff said Larry Coker was hoping Bob Tech would come back against Pittsburgh. Doesn't look like it. Panther defense now. Shante Spencer with the pick. Now, while he's running it back, let me tell you, they have at Rutgers, at West Virginia, and UAB. If they're three and five after this game, they could still go to a bowl. Let's go back to you guys. How about that unmitigated glee at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh? And you're talking about a guy that's been under the microscope. How about Walt Harris? Boy, they <laughs> fumble. Loose ball. Ford has never really put it away. Loose ball looks like Chepel recovered. Recovered by Yazid Jackson. We've been to Pittsburgh, what, once and seen him on the road a couple of times. And I know the time we were in Pittsburgh, I remember saying you don't want to be listening to sports talk shows after a couple of those games. And now it's starting to, this is the pit team we thought we were going to see earlier in the year. And I think it all revolves around their quarterback. Priestley obviously having a, a much better day. But who would have thought Virginia Tech, after getting beat at home by uh, Syracuse 22-14, you see the score right wow. now, unbelievable, 31 to 7, which leads to the question, do we see Virginia Tech exit the top 25? I don't think there's any question about it. And you know what it was? Here's Fenton getting another carry into the secondary. And stumbles down at the 42-yard line. This is a case where Tech obviously had all their emotional eggs in that national championship basket. Syracuse tipped it over yesterday, and now Pitt's stomping on it. The game was well, it's tough. I mean, when you when you have your goal set that lofty and, and you've got a trophy case that's empty waiting for your first national championship and you lose a game at home against a team many people think you're better than, you know, you, you kind of suck your thumb and kind of mope around for a week and all of a sudden you got another game that's to play. exactly right. And, no, and nobody wanted to prove themselves more than Pittsburgh after some of the games that they've they have had and Miami not necessarily helped by this Virginia Tech getting hammered by Pitt. Virginia Tech is a squad that could have really helped Miami. The one thing you've got to ask yourself, Dave, if Oklahoma runs the table, you look at Miami's schedule, you know, Boston College, Syracuse, Washington, Virginia Tech, certainly enough quality opponents to get you up into the national championship game. What if Oklahoma runs the table, beats Nebraska in the Big 12 championship? Do we see Oklahoma, Nebraska, number three for yeah. the national championship? Yeah. If you're a Miami fan, and this one broke cleanly for a first down, straight up the middle. Sykes and Taylor on the stop against Lester Trammer. You know what? Either there is somebody that's got one of these bubble machines, or, or we're having a Lawrence Welk experience. <laughs> we're perched high above the Orange Bowl, and there's little, and there's little you know, bubbles coming past our, uh, at a very fast rate of speed, I might add. Oh, yeah, definitely going with the current. Very interesting. There we are. Mid-level right at the 50-yard line. I couldn't ask for a better seat here, let me tell you. Play action by McGinn. Sideline ball. Caught out of bounds by Dillard. Marquise Fitzgerald, boy, he used that side boundary nicely to force the young man out of bounds. Marquise is senior from St. Petersburg. Big East football. Temple against number one Miami. We're at the Orange Bowl here in Miami. I'm Dave Sims with Jeff Bostic. And boy, our normal sideline reporter, our, our good friend John Sanders, enjoying one heck of an upset in our other game on our Big East Network. Pittsburgh throwing a number against Virginia Tech. Left on Pitt's schedule after today. He mentioned that at Rutgers, at West Virginia, and UAB. And for Virginia Tech, at Temple, at Virginia, and then Miami, up in Blacksburg on December 1st. And going into last week's game, Virginia Tech was a squad that had won 30 out of 33 games. They've not lost back-to-back -back in three years. Wow, that has been a while. 11.51 to go, fourth quarter. 35-0 Miami over Temple. You're watching Big East Football from ESPN+. Plus. I can still feel his hooks in my ribs. 
and takes the leather from his uppercuts. So why should I get out of the corner? Because I gladly take another three minutes of pain for a shot at a title. Wouldn't you? Friday Night Fights on ESPN2. Like a lot of organizations, ESPN was having trouble with their carpet. So they had me install a more natural surface. This grass we install is the best. It's a good Bermuda. No hot water on that, okay? Yeah, yeah. That'll set the stain. It lays down very, very pretty. Still to come on Sports Center the rest of the night in the NBA. Wherever you are, I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than grass. They are Saturday's soldiers prepared for battle, fighting for every pass, every yard, every touchdown. Be part of the action with ESPN Game Plan, only on pay-per-view. It's maximum college football with over 100 extra games you can't see anywhere else. Catch all the top conferences. To be there, all you need to do is get ESPN Game Plan, only on pay-per-view. To order, call your local cable operator or 1-800-DIRECT-TV or 1-800-333-DISH. Catfish. What a great arm. Who is that kid anyway? Of course he's got a great arm, Buttermaker. He's the best athlete in the area. But you don't understand. That's Kelly Leak. You guys talking about Kelly Leak? Yeah. That dude is a bad mother. Talking about a loan shark. I borrowed a nickel from him last week. He said if I can give him a dime by Friday, he'd break my arm. That's who bandido. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Just under 12 to play here at the Orange Bowl. Dave Sims and Jeff Bostic with you. 35 0. The number one team in the nation, the Hurricanes of Miami, leading Temple. Owls with the ball at the Miami 46 yard line. I just have a lot of fun today. There's Miami about to go to 7 0, 4 0 in the conference. Fenton gets the carry. Good job following his, his guard on that play. Kenan Fenton out of Somerville, Mass. Sacked by Al Marshall. Take a look at the Bex Beer game summary. Ken Dorsey, solid, solid numbers. Portis over 100 yards. Once again, Portis, by the way, with that going over the 100 yards, that is the 10th time he's done that. Shockey with another big day in Temple. Look at the play selection. They have been reluctant to put it in the air. It's the wrong situation here. Blitz forces McGann to run to the edge. He's close to a first down. Matter of fact, he got it. He got across the 35. Al Marshall finally brought him down. Gain of six. And the one thing the Bex beer summary will not tell you, this Miami defense has been pretty good this afternoon also. I think through three quarters, they held Temple's offense to under 100 yards of total offense. Right. If you're Larry Coker and his staff, what do you dwell on each week, you know, trying to prepare your team? Where, where do you find the negative? Well, they must uh, master in nitpicking because there's not a heck of a lot that's going wrong. <laughs> I mean, you've got a solid kicking game. You've got a quarterback that I think is going to be in the final three for the Heisman. you got two deep on the DL, two deep on the O-line. And you got running back by committee. Oh. And running back's got to be gone and uh, full back and running back. You see Mike Rump doing the uh, push-ups. My goodness, look at this, 38-7 Pittsburgh. So you wonder what, you know, Larry Coker and his step. I would not want to be on that plane going back to Roanoke. Hey, and you know how intense uh, defensive coordinator Bud uh, Bud Foster is. How about Frank Beamer? Frank how, how would you like to be called into his office next week? I don't think so. Blitz from the corner. Oh, is that blown up beautifully or what? William Joseph was there. D.J. Williams, number 17, the linebacker, the starting backer, still in there. He did a heck of a job as well. Just plugged that hole. There was nowhere to go. How much fun is Walt Harrison at staff having? Let's take a look at this play. The thing that takes running plays like this apart, look at the penetration by number 94, William Joseph. Six foot five, 282 pounder. We talk about this being quarterback university. They turned out some defensive tackles also. A guy named Sapp does pretty well across state. 
Blitz again. McGann, down he goes. Jamal Green was first there. They had a party. They had a party in the backfield. And a lot of folks were invited, and they showed up. You know, big William Joseph, number 94, collapsing the pocket. Jamal Green, the recipient of the sack. Watch 94, right there is the one that causes it. You know, Mr. Joseph will go over on the sideline and say, yeah, hey, man, I hey, Jamal, I got to get half of it. That's right. I got to get half of it. Hey, babe, you know, you owe me a little bit. This time, Marquise Fitzgerald goes back in punt return formation, a high kick that the wind just knocked down. And it'll be down at the 20-yard line. Fitzgerald's probably very disappointed after that 25-yard punt. Didn't get anywhere near him. William Joseph, at the beginning of the broadcast, we told you that he was a guy to contend with. Temple hasn't done so. He has wreaked havoc all afternoon here at the Orange Bowl. You're watching Big East Football from ESPN+. Plus. The Super Bowl most valuable player is Troy Ace. One second on the clock. Dallas touchdown. The yellow one is Pikachu. He's a Pokemon. Yeah, who is Digimon? Thanks. Digimon is like a different group, wholly separate from the Pokemons. Thanks for clarifying that. Sure. Plate 4,000 Actually, Digimon means digital monsters. Pick me out a winner, Bobby. Okay. Baseball tonight, every night at 10 and midnight on ESPN. Sun drenched crowd here, at Miami at the Orange Bowl, 35 0, the number one team in the nation. Isn't that sweet? See the little boy, boyfriend, girlfriend kiss thing? You gotta like that in a football game. That's when you know it's a 35 point <laughs> lead, right? <laughs> yeah, where are we going for dinner? What are we going to have for our derbs? What movie are we going to do? I'll tell you what people are talking about down here. Where is this hurricane going to hit? You're in lines. Here's a hurricane right now. Mr. Gore. Across the 35 to the 37 before Jamal Wallace finally brings him down. A lot of people hope that these hurricanes wind up in the Rose Bowl. Plain and simple. I'm going to go out on a limb, okay? Mm -hmm. They win the rest of their games. They will play for a national championship. I don't think that that, that limb's going to hold you. You've been out on some limbs before, and I but this think one's going to hold you. I think they're going to wind up playing Nebraska. And what a contrast in two football oh, teams. Oh, man. That we saw it a few years ago. Remember when Sapp was in? He was here. First and 10 for the Kings. Cut up. A loose pressure momentarily. Got rid of it. Oh, no, that's not going to work. Back in the neighborhood, that works. Back in the neighborhood, that works beautifully. However, Carlos Joseph, big fella, come on back, baby. That is not going to work. <laughs> That's what it is. I remember we had a guy, big heavy, and he always, if you get a third short, you give it to big heavy and let him run. How would you like to be somebody in the secondary having to tackle the six foot six? They say 316, folks. I'm saying there's a lot more beef on this than 316. Look at the nipple this, though. Are you kidding me? But look at look at Jamal Wallace, number nine from Temple. He's still down, unfortunately. You know, he's spotting about 140 pounds. At least. On the play. The ruling on the field is that we had a fumble recovered and advanced legally by the offense. Whoa! So big fella does get credit. And he gets credit for a run. They said it was a fumble recovery. It was not Goodness a pass. Gracious. Now you take... That play, he will, he's will he got a play to remember the rest of his life. He could have 100 million pancakes, but that's the play. Let me tell you something. Remember. 
Let, let me tell you something. I played 14 years in the National you Football ever have League. Like I had one ball that was deflected. Right. I caught it. Right. Ran with it. Right. Bad mistake. <laughs> you got hit by? I tell you, I, I don't. I didn't have that many uh, pieces of paper to write the numbers. <laughs> All I know is when you've got the football, it draws a lot of heat. What team was it against? The Detroit Lions. Man, oh man. I tell you what, Carlos Joseph, the spin move. Watch this. This is amazing. They call it a fumble. Yeah, it is a fumble. That's an excellent call. 12 yards on the return. Look at a spin there. Kept his feet. And once again, he's another guy from Miami with no socks. What is it about the socks? South look, Florida. Thing. Look at that, folks. That's tape at the top of the shoes. Oh, man. Look at Cole. Look at this guy. Lacey saves six. He is absolute magic. 27 yards on the game. We Frank, talked about it earlier. I want my best football players on the field. Gore, nine carries, 85 yards. That's sickening. This guy has got a fifth and sixth gear. Sean Lacey with a touchdown saving tackle. Folks, if you're a Miami fan, remember number 32 for a couple of years. He's oh, a special yeah. one. Well, we like Kevin Jones a lot, but I tell you what, he's more explosive than Kevin Jones at Virginia Tech. And that's saying something. And he's going to have a lot more fun this evening than Kevin <laughs> yeah. Jones will also. <laughs> that's the truth. You're just joining us. Pittsburgh is killing Virginia Tech at Pittsburgh. Portis gets another carry to the 19-yard line. Picks up six. Here's the other part of the BCS. If you're Larry Coker, do you have to really run the score up on a team like Temple to maybe impress the people that are voting for uh, you would hope not. You would hope not. It's right. Supposedly, that's been taken out as a variable. Well, the one thing about it, if Virginia Tech loses, you know, that thing about Miami winning and it being a quality win evaporates. They still have a buck 15 to go third period. Incredible. Got time, sets, throws behind his receiver. Heading wide open. Jason Gethers. They've thrown at Jason about three, four times today. I don't believe he has a catch, though. Jason doubled as a wide out in the running back last year. Another you, injured Temple player, and that's not good. Sean Lacey's an outstanding performer on offense, defense, and special teams, and he's playing a pretty good game, and he's going to gut it out. Portis, 18 carries, 106 yards. Gore, 9 for 84. Lacey's got a problem with his left shoulder. And this is not a game to be playing and not a team to be playing if you've got a shoulder problem. It's amazing when Portis comes out of the lineup, Gore goes back in. It's kind of like tag team wrestling. Yeah. They, they, they give each other fives on the way in and out. Man, oh man, what a combination. Frank Gore, remember that name. Let's take a look at our best play of the game. There's so many to choose from. It's brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people, and we go with Edward Reed's interception right here. 19th of his career, ties Benny Blades. Miami record and a real good return as well by Edward Reed. Reed came in 270 return yards, picked up another 25 on that. So he's 295 career return yards. And we talked about it. Miami lost three number one draft picks to the NFL and the coach of the year. How many of them will be number one picks this year? I know McKinney, the left tackle, will be one. Oh, there's no question. Gonzalez, maybe. Here's Gore again. Caught from behind by Klecko. Yeah. Tell you what, Klecko's shown me something. Tank continues, uh, the motor continues to run. He's still quick. I mean, it's been a long day, but he's out there fighting and scratching. Brings up a fourth down, and Seavers will come in for the field goal from 20, 37 yards. You wonder if a guy like Dan Klecko regrets his decision to go to Temple and follow in the footsteps of his dad. 37-yard field goal with the win. Plenty of juice on it, and it's good. So Seavers on the season now, 12 out of 14. Tack on another three for the Miami Hurricanes. 6.05 to go in the ball game. Canes lead it 38 nothing. You're watching Biggie's Football from ESPN Plus. Get into the zone, the ESPN zone. 
the ultimate sports dining and entertainment experience. Eat great food, watch any game that you want, and compete in our sports arena. ESPN Zone, what more do you need? Visit The Zone in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, in downtown Chicago, in New York's Times Square, in Atlanta's Buckhead District, and in downtown Washington, D.C. Get into the zone. They are Saturday soldiers, prepared for battle, fighting for every pass, every yard, every touchdown. Catch all this week's college football action with ESPN Game Plan. It's maximum college football with up to 12 games you can't see anywhere else, only on pay-per-view. To be there, all you need to do is get ESPN Game Plan, now available as pay-per-day. To order, call your local cable operator or 1-800-DIRECT-TV or 1-800-333-DISH. Discover Card, Saturday mornings at 10.30 on ESPN. Today's game has been brought to you by Bex Light, Germany's lighter side. Sitco, at Sitco, we enjoy football as much as you do. Sitco, we know you. Polaris, it's not just a sled, it's a priority. The United States Army, an army of one. And by Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Back here at the Orange Bowl, everybody. 38-0 Miami after the 37-yard field goal by Seavers. Seven plays, 60 yards, 3-0-3 on the clock. Those mascots have it so bad, don't they? <laughs> yeah, right. You know what? They're dancing all the pretty girls. I can bring him up here, and I'll go down there for a few minutes. How's that? <laughs> you go down there and shake it. If I shake it, I will break it, believe me. <laughs> Boy, this Miami team, like you said, the kicking game, the run game, they can stop you in the run. They got great DBs who can go against it. You want to throw it 50 times, they'll play with you. I'm looking a little bit forward. If it were a Nebraska matchup, how well do they do sitting in there and taking, you know, yeah. power running attacks? The Lord knows that's uh, what Nebraska would be bringing to the table. Nothing I mean, like having a little wind at your back. See, was blast that one. I mean, this defense is not very big. McDougal 260, 282, 262, 254. This is a defense built around speed. And Nebraska. Is so built around corn Fred, big, it. strong offensive lineman. Loaded up. Put it in the truck and let's go. And I'm one of those people to believe if you give me a good big guy at the end of a 60 minute game, he'll beat a good, quick, smaller guy. Yeah, because that third quarter, say mid third, if it's a ball game, start pounding. At some point, somebody 260 pounds gets tired of seeing somebody 310. With a head of steam coming <laughs> but a four and yard a, run. And right? a good running back. <laughs> Got some of the alumni cheerleaders here having some fun here. These guys, he's having some fun. Keep it up the middle. Temple allows Lester Trammer. This is a going to be a long trip back to Philadelphia for the Temple Owls. Al's come in one and three in the conference, two and five overall. And it's not like Bobby Wallace hasn't seen some success. Division two coach of the quarter century by the NCAA after the 1997 D2 championship game, won three championships in a row. Oh, there's a football play. That was a football play. Sean Taylor with the tackle on Trammer. That was the first time I met Bobby back in 93. We won the first national championship. 
Uh, Doc Walker and Dan Jiggins and I had the pleasure of doing a game down there. Brutally cold day in Florence, Alabama, against Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And Bobby has been at uh, Mississippi State, East Carolina, Wyoming, Auburn, Mississippi State again, Illinois, and North Alabama. He recruited Bo Jackson. Trammer to the outside. Knock him out of bounds. Lock with 4.35 to go. You know, everybody talks about two sport athletes. Was there anybody better than Bo Jackson? Uh, incredible. Absolutely incredible. And it is a shame. You know, him getting injured with the uh, Raiders mm -hmm. and popping that hip, which looked like just another play at the, the day at the office. And, you know, only as Bo can go through hip replacement and still come back to play in the major league. Right. <laughs> Rather productively, too. 38 nothing. A little shovel pass, but the quarterback got cream. Absolutely got cream. John Square, a red shirt freshman. From Houston, Texas, on the option, there's Mr. Square. Well, he hit the quarterback square and then some after the pitch. I think that would be square hitting flush. Man, oh man, coach, don't run that play again. He's on the light side, too. They list him at 201. Only a freshman, though. I know, plenty of time. You know, two years <laughs> in the weight room, all of a sudden we got 260. No question. Here's a guy that's seen a lot of daylight today. And he has run very effectively, not only from scrimmage here in the second half, but also on kickoff returns. McKinnon Fenton, Sean Taylor, and Al Marshall finally bring him down. 34 yards on that pickup. His total, uh, his all-purpose running today has got to be pretty significant. 81 yards and two kickoffs. And add that 34, so he's well over 100. It's been a fine day for the junior from Somerville, Mass. They're Miami fans led by the alumni cheerleaders keeping their interest stoked here. McGann changed the play. Left guard moves too quickly. No penalty flag. McGann's going to take it and down he goes at the 18 yard line. Loss of about four. Maurice Sykes, sophomore out of Miami's Monsignor Pace High School, brings him down. And even though Miami's got some backup players on the defensive side of the football in the game, they know the one mission right now. Shut out. Keep the goose egg on the board. That is a big deal in football. If you got a football team shut out for almost 57 minutes, let's keep it alive. That's right. There won't be that unit on the field. The first unit will let you hear about it. For the next week, Benton, six carries, 61 yards rush. That give Larry Coker something to complain about. Yeah, right. Inside handoff, penalty flag. Here's another example of that quickness. How about Jarrell Weaver? You see how quickly he got in hold? Now, granted, the whistle was blown, but the, the officials need to do a better job blowing the whistle Thank right you. there. Because we've seen Good people ball. almost Four get their head. Offense, five yard penalty, still second down. Glad you could join us this afternoon here in Miami with three minutes to go in the ball game. This is Big East football, the game of the week, the number one team in the nation. Miami Hurricanes flexing their muscles today. I'm Dave Sims and Jeff Bostic. I've got one question, Dave. Is Miami the windy city? I thought that was Chicago, right? It is. Boy, I'll tell you what, that Hurricane Michelle to the southwest of Cuba. Fake it, screen, nowhere. Weaver with the tackle again the speed. He's a sophomore from Northwestern High School here in Miami. His twin brother Jarrell is a linebacker here as well. Jarrell, J A double -R, R E L L, was an All American in high school. Well, that's got to be tough. Jarrell and Jarrell. Miami got on the board, 7-0 in the first quarter. Dorsey, a 15-yard pass. Portis, a 7-yard run to make it 14-0. Loose ball, Miami's got it. And the shutout looks like it's going to stand up. Miami took it to, uh, went to halftime, leading 14-0. Third quarter, Dorsey, an 11-yard TD pass to Johnson, 21-0. That was after they were lining up for a field goal, but Temple got caught from an illegal substitution. Recovered. 
That fumble recovered by Ken Dangerfield. And that was pretty much if their back wasn't already broken, that did it for the Temple Owls right there. And you almost get the feeling, Dave, that Miami has played as hard as they need, need to, to play. Ex ex excellent call. You know, they haven't exactly hit the gas pedal today. As I said, and that's a great luxury, isn't it? And no, I'm telling you. <laughs> Look at this move to the, across the 35, 36 yard line. And that was Portis with the carry. And that gets him over the 2,000 career mark. That's why they had him in. And let me ask you, why is that? Right at 2,000 yards, and he joins Otis Jerome Anderson, Edrin James, James Jackson, and Danielle Ferguson. All 2,000 yards plus. There you go. And so Portis is done for the day. I know what your question is, and it's a legit question. He could have got that next week. Why is Frank Gore in the game? Penalty flag. This talent's remarkable. I mean, what more can you say? This is fabulous talent on the field here at Miami, and they do it year in and year out. What a job. And the thing about this Miami squad, they're still a very young football team yeah, right. now. Doing the run, holding offense. Ten guards, in spot of the foul, remains second down. Yeah, how scary is that, right? This defense only loses four starters. Wow. And you know recruiting has got to be out the roof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you live here, if you're right here in Miami and you're a stud, if you're somewhere in the, in the state of Florida, believe me, if you're first line, second line player, Miami is on your list and vice versa. Straight up the middle. Maybe to the 30th. Coming up in the final minute of play. And there are really only two areas of this football team that Larry Coker and his staff are going to have to rebuild. They lose three seniors in the secondary. They lose three seniors on their offensive line. Other than that, same people. That's right. And a lot of people are hoping same story. Dorsey's back. Frank Gore will be all of a sophomore. <laughs> Jeremy Shockey back. Remarkable. Keeps it alive. Oh, got a nice block. Another nice block. Throws. He got a man running deep down. Be a nice catch. Oh, almost had to catch. That was Gethers. Gethers cannot get a break today. Fourth time. Gethers does not have a catch today. They've thrown at him. A big, he's got one catch. They've thrown at him about four other times where he's just missed making plays. Penalty flag on the field. And this one hit him in a bad place, Dave. And now old hands. Right in the hands. We've got a penalty back at the line of scrimmage. You know, you've often heard about hurricane parties. Do you think they'll have one here this evening? Because they say they're a hurricane going to hit here Monday. Personal foul, defense, tackling with the helmet, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. So an automatic first down, clock at 27 seconds, and Miami about to put this one in the books officially. Try to get as many post-game comments as possible. This game wrapping up here in Miami. Crowd being informed that Clinton Portis is going over the 2,000 mark in his career rushing. And that will do it. That will do it. That was Kyle Cobia with the carry. Final 10 seconds. A no doubt about her here, particularly in the second half. 38 to nothing, the final. The Miami Hurricanes, number one in the nation. They exercise their might this afternoon, knocking off the Temple House for the 10th straight time in Big East play. We'll be back to the Orange Bowl after this timeout. No question about this one, 38 nothing. You're watching Big East football from ESPN+. Plus.